Bowl will say a Yankee Stadium goodbye to one of the all-time greats on his home turf. Derek Jeter, one of the greatest to suit up in the pinstripes, is hanging it up after this season. Jeter and the Yankees take on the A's, and it starts right now. like the rain delay is going to be maybe just a little bit over an hour but we are going to play baseball they're working on the field the A's are set to go and we get a look at Derek Jeter as he is going to retire after the season he's going to DH tonight and bat second in the Yankees lineup and Scott Casimir is going to take them on for the A's so we are going to play baseball a little bit of wet conditions but that's okay it's game one of the series it's the A's and the Yankees coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. So, indeed, the, the rain delay is behind us, and we're just about set to go. Scott Casimir, Ray, is looking for his seventh win. He got a complete game his last outing with a little help from Josh Donaldson. Well, he went nine innings. That's the most important thing for him. Scott Casimir did an outstanding job against the Tigers. Just one blemish. That was a home run by Torrey Hunter. Otherwise, what a terrific job he did. Changing speeds, using the changeup, fastball both sides of the plate, curveball every once in a while. But he kept the pitch count down, so he could go nine innings. Bob Miller did not have a problem sending him out for the ninth inning. And like you said, rewarded by Josh Donaldson. But he is a pitcher now. Talking to Al Leiter. Al Leiter said, what makes him so good? I said, you know as a pitcher, when a pitcher becomes a pitcher, instead of a flamethrower, he's much better. That's what we've seen from Scott Kazmer. And he's going to face a Yankees lineup that's a lot different from years past. We'll certainly <laughs> talk about that. Hiroki Kuroda is going to pitch for the Yankees. So there's your pitching matchup. And we are set for baseball as the rain is past us. And we're looking forward to game one of this series. We'll have lineups in first pitch from Yankee Stadium when we come back. Dark clouds around, but the Yankees have taken the field. So we are just moments away from first pitch after the rain delay. A little over an hour. We'll give you an exact time on the rain delay when we hear it. But the A's and the Yankees are ready to go. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is now open daily. 
It's 71 degrees, so it's cooled off some after the rain. And I didn't do indeed think there it's going to hang around a little bit, but as long as it doesn't start pouring again, we should be all right. With a little help from a rainbow. Well, that makes it a little bit that? better. Yeah, that makes it worthwhile. So let's look at the lineup tonight for the Oakland A's. It starts with Coco Crisp. He's in center field. Jason will catch. Donaldson at third. Good to have Moss back in the lineup. He's going to DH. Then Cespedes in left. Lowry at short. Kiaspo at first. Gentry will be in right field. And Eric Sogard is the second baseman. Starting the series for the Yankees in this three-game series. Right-hander Hiroki Kuroda, 4-3 and three on the season. Just 11 walks in, 49 strikeouts. And the thing about him, he has been throwing a lot of pitches and not going deep in the games, at least the last couple anyway. So we'll see how he uses his fastball, curveball, slide and change, two and four seam fastball. And of course, the change as a split finger fastball is a lot of the Japanese born pitchers will use. And Kuroda will use it quite effectively, especially when it gets a couple of strikes on a hitter, if that is the case. Defensively behind Kuroda, Yankees line up like this. Gardner's in left, Ellsbury in center, Soriano in right, Sizemore, Scott Sizemore is getting a start tonight. Ryan will be at short, Salarte at second, Teixeira back at first. He's been dealing with some wrist injuries. And John Ryan Murphy is the catcher. I told you there was some new names on this Yankee <laughs> roster. <laughs> Lots of changes made in the offseason by the New York Yankees. Well, Francisco Cervelli, who was the backup to Brian McCann, who was signed the long-term contract coming over from the Braves. Cervelli's on the disabled list, so this young man Murphy getting a chance to catch and doing a fine job. So Coco steps in and we are set for baseball. Ground screw did a nice job. It never really rained super hard, Ray, but it was just kind of a the soft rain, but hard enough to hold up the start of the game. The first pitch is outside from Corota, so we are underway. So Chris, Jaso, and Donaldson to face Hiroki Corota here in the first inning. And that one has popped up. Sizemore coming over right in front of the A's dugout. Now toward the dugout and Leaning up against the railing, he makes the catch, and that's the first out. Scott Sizemore, what a story for him and for Josh Donaldson in the athletics as Coco had a pitch, and you could see his reaction and hoping that the limited amount of foul territory would give him another pitch, another continuation of the bat, but the ball stayed in play, and Sizemore was able to get to the ball. It's good to see Scott Sizemore in the big leagues and getting a chance to play. Uh, Joe Girardi said he'd been playing well, and then they put somebody else there. But uh, bottom line, he's back in the lineup, and not surprised it's against his former team tonight. Here's John Jaso hitting 296 with five home runs, 14 RBIs. Okay, if they're doing the roll call right field, I wonder if they know the players who are on the field. It is different, <laughs> boy. It's not only different, but then the Yankees are playing without some of the best players who are on the disabled list. But he's working hard out yeah. there. <laughs> well, the A's have their bleacher fans, bleacher uh, whatever, that are out in right field. That uh, they do a very good job with the different players. And of course, there is the leader of the right field gang here at Yankee Stadium, leader of the roll call. And you better be a player and answer if they give the roll call. I mean, that's. It's kind of like the late Bob Shepard announcing your name or Roy Steele Coliseum over the weekend. Get the roll call, you acknowledge it. Yep. Unwritten rule. Yep. Might be written though, guys. They might put that in a rule your book. contract. Yeah. Yeah. Shift is on for Jaso. 3 1 pitches, bounce foul at the plate. So Hiroki Kuroda, 39 year old right hander. Here's your shift. But Kuroda, 11 years in Japan, then four years with the Dodgers, and this is his third year now with the Yankees. So he's been around a while. Well, these players are looking around saying, where do I go? And now they're shifted back over a little bit anyways, and that's lined right into the glove of Teixeira for out number two. 
Well, the shift last night cost the Yankees and the captain Derek Jeter because he was playing out of position for a ball down the line. As a three and two hit hard, but nobody except to share there as didn't get past him. If it does, it's a double, but it's caught as he made it back into the lineup tonight. So with two outs, Donaldson steps in. Donaldson hitting 284, 15 home runs, 48 runs batted in. And we off a good series against the Angels where he had five hits, a couple of home runs, knocked in seven runs. And took the first pitch and kind of grimaced a little bit and thinking Chris Guccione, that's his strike zone. If that's it, then uh, be a little bit more aggressive with a low fastball. That one in the dirt. One and one the count. There's Guccione. Paul Nauert will be at first. The crew chief Tom Hallion is at second. And Sean Barber is at third. You know what we get in the series finale Thursday. Tom Hallion in his call. Yeah. Oh, oh. He'll be ready. Oh will he ever. Sweeping sliders outside. No swing. Aggressive as always, Josh Donaldson started and quickly stopped with the top hand, did not break the plane. Good pitch there, and it's two and two. Corona has that little hesitation right when he kind of gets to the top of his delivery. He just stops just for a second, right there. Yep. Well, we've seen it from Matsusaka, the Red Sox, when he was with the Red Sox, and see what we see on Thursday with Tanaka, another Japanese born pitcher, the big signing of the Yankees. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there by Kuroda, and he has a three up, three down inning. So the Yankees come to bat against Scott Kazmir when we come back. Including here at Yankee Stadium. Let's look at the lineup for the Yankees. Gardner, Jeter, Ellsbury. See, Jeter's going to DH tonight. Teixeira, Solarte, Soriano, Sizemore, Murphy, and Ryan. Scott Kazmer, 12th start for the left hander, who's being signed during the offseason. Off to a tremendous start, 6 and 2 record, and the 11 starts. And of course, coming off a complete game. Hard to believe, but it's the. Uh, the day of non complete game, but yet Scott Casmer in his last start, just his second career complete game, and did it against the Tigers with the walk off by Josh Donaldson against Joe Nathan. So Casmer using all of his pitches and all of them successfully. So he will face Brett Gardner, the leadoff hitter for the Yankees. Gardner 279 with three home runs and 22 runs batted in. Jeter to follow and then Ellsbury. First pitch in first drive.
Gardner, the left fielder. Good guy to keep off the bases because he's a very good base stealer. They did sign him to a multi year contract, oh. but uh, Kevin, I think we both agree that he is the table setter, yet they gave a huge contract to Jacoby Ellsbury, and he's hitting third in tonight's lineup. And there's a base hit to right field. This guy is dangerous on the base pass. Here's the defense for the A's tonight. Cespedes, Crisp, and Gentry in the outfield. Donaldson, Lowry, Sogard, Kiaspo on the infield. Kiaspo making his 10th start at first base this year. And Jason will do the catching. So Gentry out in right field. And we'll tell you why in just a moment. Here's Jeter. The Jeter steps in. His average at 267 with a homer in 11 RBIs. And that pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. One of the things about Jeter, probably one of the best at hitting ball in the opposite field. And with the runner at first base, Scott, there's one thing about the hole on the right side. Look at it where Sobard's playing and where the first baseman is. And for Jeter, you have to play close to second base for possible double play, but that opens up that side for one of the best opposite field hitters in the game. Yeah, I bet that hole looks oh. twice as big to him as yeah. it does to us. And that's that right there is about the way it's been his whole career. That's right. 3,000 plus plus, and of course, a home run on number 3,000. Jeter right now with 3,367 hits. So he's eighth on the all time hit list, and he's 52 away from Carl Yastrzemski, who's next up on the list. Have to make some room for Jeter. Gonna have to make some room for Joe Torre, too, right? They've already announced this. Just uh, think it's later in the summer, maybe after he's inducted into Cooperstown. Well deserved. So number six will be retired, and I think Mariano Rivera in signing autographs signed his name, beautiful signature underneath. It said "Last to Wear 42," and of course he was the last to wear. So what's going to happen <laughs> is if you come to the Yankees and you're one of those guys who really likes those single-digit numbers, <laughs> as Cheater swings and misses on a foul tip. So that's the first strikeout. But if you like, if you really would like a single digit number, you're going to be out of luck. That's right. So the two and the six, the only ones missing. And let's see Martin, Ruth, Garrick, DiMaggio, Mano, Vera, Dickey, Roger Maris, huh. I don't think you're going to bring those out of retirement. No, and that's, no, that's that's just one through ten. Oh, yeah, There's that's true. That's true. Right Matter of fact, there are two tens, I think, with Elston Howard and. Uh, <laughs> Two uh, number two eights. Eights, two yeah. eights. That's, that's right. That's right. Two Thurman eights. Munson up there. Well, Mariano Rivera, even right. before he completed the season last year, they took the 42. Of course, Jackie Robinson's uh, 42. Or ever retired. And of course, Mariano Rivera, the last to wear 42. So after last season, 42 will never be worn again. So here's the man that uh, they gave a lot of money and a long term contract. Brought him over from Boston, and that in itself was rare because not a lot of Red Sox players end up in Yankees uniform or vice versa. Some have, and Johnny Damon stands out, probably is the one that most recently helped the Yankees and helped the Red Sox. Seven years, 153 million was the contract that was given to Jacoby Ellsbury. Gardner not running and the balls hit high in the air down the left field line and it'll be into the seats. So he showed you Gentry playing right field and this is why Gentry's playing right field because earlier today Josh Reddick was placed on the disabled list. Ryan Cook as expected comes off the disabled list and Cook is in the bullpen ready to go tonight. But Reddick to the DL. Remember on the homestand Reddick Banged into the wall a little bit, made the catch, but hyper extended his knee. And we had a great replay of it where you could see it, and it's been bothering him, so Reddick will head to the disabled list. 
know one hyperextension is bad enough, but both of them on the same play. And you're going to get to see it. Watch the knees of Josh Reddick as he makes the, the play. On a fly ball, I think Calhoun hit it, but as he goes back, you won't see it as much here. We have another side angle. And this is it. Watch the knees. Oh, that oh, hurts. Man. Oh, that hurts. That wall's padded. Those both knees hyperextended, and that is reason enough right there to go on the deal just watching that. Line drive left field. That's a base hit. Ellsbury goes the other way. So first and second, one out for Mark Teixeira. On a fastball in for Garda, he pulled it and fastball away for Ellsbury to go to the opposite field. And one thing that happens when you're, you're pitching in Yankee Stadium, not so much as a lefty, but the short right field porch that's well known for being a home run haven. Kind of pitch hitters away a little bit more. Teixeira switch hitter will bat right handed, very powerful hitter. From both sides, but especially from the left side, and there's a short right field fence. And whether it's old Yankee Stadium or the new one, it's still very inviting for the left handed hitters. 314 down the line, and it does not get that much deeper as you go into right center. But of course, 385 right center, 399 left center, and that's why players try to hit the ball to the opposite field. Right handers, of course, left handers like to pull it. Just missed inside. The Yankees are just glad to have to share in there. He's missed the last couple of games. His wrist has been bothering him, and well, he missed pretty much the whole season last year with you know, the wrist injury. And he hits that one to shallow right field down the line. Gentry on the move, and it falls fair. Gardner is going to come in to score, and Ellsbury read it. He goes to third, and Teixeira with a blue single, and it's one nothing Yankees. It landed up, looked like about six inches fair. That's about it. And shaking the head by Scott Casmir, and now looking for some magic to get out of the inning, allowing just one run. And you have to respect the power of Teixeira. And he didn't know where it was. Kiaspo going out, Gentry coming over, neither one could get to it. And a lot of it because with Teixeira, even though he's batting right handed, Gentry had to respect the power by playing relatively deep. So Gardner read it perfectly, and even Jacoby Ellsbury at first base right behind him. So first and third, one out, and here is the second baseman, Young Hervis Salarte. Who has been quite a find for the Yankees? And with Robinson Cano obviously gone, Salarte is getting a lot of time at second base. And look at the numbers: 298 with six homers and 26 RBIs. Ray, he leads the Yankees yeah. in RBIs. Yeah. Young Hervis Salarte. There's a shot. Donaldson grabs it. Unbelievable. And that ball was headed, maybe even down on the corner, was hit so hard. And Donaldson leaving his feet. And the hot corner supreme because this ball is on him so quickly. And he's up immediately looking. Is anybody off the bases? Maybe it's hit so hard they the runners couldn't even think about advancing or at least getting off towards the next bag. So big out there, here's Alfonso Soriano. Soriano swings on a foul tip. Uh, Donaldson just reacting, pushing off the right foot and going down. I mean, that's that's not even a step on a dive. That's a simple push off and dive. Just throw him a change up to Soriano. You could probably throw him 10 in a row because he's always looking fastball. So Jason on the block, count one and one to Soriano. 126 average with runners in scoring position. That's what the league is hitting against Scott Casper. Thus, he has the fourth best ERA in the American League at coming in 2.36. And another changeup, and Soriano swings right through it. Well, that's three in a row. The one bounce that Jason caught and blocked, but 
Again, Soriano has the leg kick, and he is opening up to hit at nine miles. And he's hit a lot of home runs in his career, stolen a lot of bases. Always been very aggressive. One two pitch, and he waves at a changeup that looked like it hit out in front of the home plate area, but. Casimir will take it and the Yankees get one run and we're headed to the second one nothing New York. This is the fourth of five three city road trips to start this 2014 season. And for the Athletics, start a new road winning streak because remember what they did. In, well, we don't want to remember what they did in Toronto because it wasn't very good. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't about. either. Tampa, the last game, and Toronto, we forgot about them already. I guess mm -hmm. when we cross back in and from the right. border. That's right. <laughs> what happens in Canada stays they, in Canada. The exchange rate, that's what happened. It stayed there. He's 18 and 10 on the road, 17 and 12 at home, 35 and 22 overall. That four and a half game lead over the Angels in the West. Six game lead over Seattle and Texas. 11 and a half game lead over the Astros. Boss back in the lineup. 13 home runs, 46 RBIs. He hit a grand slam on Friday night in the first inning. And then in the third inning, he left the game with a little tightness in his right calf, has not played since. And maybe a good idea to DH him tonight. And he drives with the center that's hit well. Ellsbury back, spinning around, now moving into left center, and he's got it. Well, that's Death Valley. As we uh, had mentioned, that ball was crushed. Couldn't hit it any harder. Nice to have pulled it, but straight away central. And it is a long way to center field here. Well, he's running like he knew he didn't get enough to get it out, but try to take it easy. 408 straight away center. The ball kind of slicing over towards left center. So the breakdown. Of course, the left field alley always jumps out at you, 399, and the shortness down the lines. I think the difference in right field and left field is they're both short down the line, but right field, the fence just doesn't seem to go back at all. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's short down the line, and then it stays short into right center field. In fact, you know what's funny, Rad? I'm looking out there. Of course, in deep, deep right center field, 385, that's by the bullpens, but there are no other signs that give you the how far it is in right field. 
because it's probably not as far as they want people to think it is. You're right. That one is rolled through the right side. And that's a base hit for Cespedes. You put that down as a base hit right field right through to the second baseman yep. where he normally would have been playing. Sometimes it works. Oh. Sometimes it doesn't. Well, and Cespedes, a little surprising that they're employing the shift on him as much. And they're saying, well, I'll give him a single. But you know what, Cespedes has hit 10 home runs, but he's hit a lot of balls the opposite field. He hit the triple on Saturday night to drive in a couple of runs, then pulled the home run off group to left field on the curve ball. But Cespedes uses the whole field. And if you're going to give him that and pitch him away as he just did, he's going to take it. And you know what's funny, though, Ray, is as you look where Murphy, the catcher, was set up, he wanted it in. Yeah. So you have to be able to pitch to the defense as well. That's so a great point. We'll show the replay again and watch where the catcher sets up and then watch where the pitch is. It just kind of leaked out a little bit to the outer half of the plate. So you're you're not helping out your defense at all. See he wants yeah. it in. But well, now where it's leaked. See it goes out. Yeah. And that's perfect to go that direction. But you know also type if you're set up inside. You have to assume he's going to be strong enough to pull the pitch. Plus it's a fastball. And it doesn't guarantee that with a fastball inside, he is going to pull it, or anybody's going to pull a fastball in. Unless it's a serious mistake. And you pull it, it's going to be in the seats, typically. So I guess the sure. point we're making is all that shifting is great, but you have to have a pitcher who can do it. And you know what? The Tampa Bay Rays pitching staff, the ones they had when they're healthy, they're the ones that kind of started yeah. it. And they pitch into, or at least according to the shift. But you're right. I mean, it's almost like, a, well, they're doing it. We better do it too. And sometimes you better have or need to have the pitchers to be able to pitch accordingly. Quick throw. Suspicious is back. Lowry hitting 245 with four home runs, 22 RBIs. Lowry was three for nine in that series against. The Angels hit a home run. He's blocked by Murphy. Well, as Jed Larry told us after the game on Sunday, he had a 3 0 pitch earlier against Jared Weaver. And the manager, see Weaver looking at him again, wondering, are you swinging 3 0? Yes. And Jed said he asked the manager, or the manager asked him. If I'd given you the swing three and over, would you have swung at it? And he said there's only one predictable count, at least to the point on Sunday, that Jared Weaver will pitch to, and that's three and over. You figure you're going to get a fastball, it just depends on the velocity. But he said any other count, you never know. So Jed might have changed everything for uh, Jed, uh, Jared Weaver. Right near the bag at second, and that's a double fly. So Ryan, the shortstop, was playing right there. He just stepped on the bag, threw the first double play, and the A's do not score.
California is brought to you by Real Strong Redwood. Learn more at realstrongredwood.com. Beautiful look outside Yankee Stadium, and I guess you can't really say new Yankee Stadium anymore. This is the sixth year of this ballpark. It's still the Taj Mahal baseball, it's, though. It's pretty nice. <laughs> it is nice. Opened in 2009, and Yankees won a World Series their first year in this ballpark. So that's not a bad way to kick it off. One and one to Scott Sizemore. Fouls it right at the plate. Run on three hits for the Yankees in the first inning. Jason may be walking this one off a little bit. Right, big toe and got the shin guard extending over the foot. That didn't help. Are you having a a former and a possible third baseman for the athletics hitting now, Scott Sizemore, and two springs ago when he injured his knee and missed the whole season, Josh Donaldson took over. And then another injury to Scott Sizemore last spring, yep. same knee. So Sizemore gets caught looking, so he's retired. Third strikeout for Cam here. Well, Chris Cochiona likes both the high and the low strike. This a little bit up, and after calling the low strike, figured he might not give this one, but nails the corner, has the height, and not much you can do. Just head back to Doug. So one out for John Ryan Murphy, young catcher. Just turned 23 years old. Jason was taking a beating already. Got him on the right foot, one back off the mask. But he's not wearing the uh, same mask that he wore last year, so he has a little bit more protection. Check out the mask, and it's not going to be on his face very long. Or at least comfortably on his face. See why he likes DHing? Yeah, I sure can. <laughs> Good change up there, and it's 0 2 to Murphy. He looks too young to even be in the big ones. <laughs> he is a young looking lad. And right back to the change up, and Murphy strikes out. So two outs, and here's tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. The season comparison last year to this year for Scott Casimir. Pitches per inning down. Pitches per plate appearance down. Well, that's bigger. Three pitches an inning, Ray. You think about that. I that's mean, fine. now you're talking 20, 25, 30 pitches. Maybe through the course of a game. That can be an extra inning. Yep. Sometimes even more than that. One of the things that's important for a catcher who is not catching a game to be at least aware of what a pitcher is doing, because in the case of John Jay, so this is just his second time catching him in previous 11 starts. And that was the third start by Scott Casimir. Dirk Norris has caught every other start. So you also have an idea of his pitches, and the changeup is a good one from this left hander, and he throws it again. and because it comes out of his hand so much like a fastball and the speed of his arm, the delivery, hit his gear up forward, and there's the swing on an excellent changeup. The best one he threw was he bounced it to Sor Soriano, and he swung wildly to pitch the bounce in front of the dirt. In front of the plate, that is. So one and two to Brendan Ryan. Fastball and Ryan fouls it back. So 
some more ground balls and less strikeouts and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, he's had three starts and double figures in ground ball outs and one against the Astros 15 ground ball outs. Ryan takes that one two and two. You know, pitching at the Coliseum even though that's a pitcher's haven because of the foul territory and more of a fly ball type pitcher park but you keep it on the ground you can take your chances I don't care where you're pitching and so far he's done a good job of doing it. Now that changeup was up and Ryan fouls it. That's really what Torrey Hunter hit in his last start Saturday. It was a higher changeup and it was up but still recognize it a little bit too quick pulled it foul. The best one is down and away sometimes in the dirt. And now three and two. So Ryan, the ninth place hitter, waiting on a three two count. And a changeup, and he struck him out. So Scott Casimir strikes out the side. One looking, two swinging, and we're headed to the third. One nothing Yankees. Bowling Bash presented by Chevron and Lagunitas and supported by Crystal Clear Imaging and Sharp Investments. The match takes place on Saturday, June 21st at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. Proceeds benefit the A's Community Fund. So the Yankees with a 1 0 lead. It's the top of the third. Chili's back home. You know, he won a couple of World Series in 1998, 1999, his last two years of playing baseball. Wearing his big New York Yankees World Championship ring, and he's wearing it because he wants to show the current players what it's like to win a World Series and show it off and say, "This is what you're trying to do, what you're trying to play for." So that was the beginning of three consecutive. They won in 2000, then lost to the Diamondbacks in 2001, which uh, they had the lead going Game Seven at the end. Mariano Rivera helped, and a remarkable comeback by the Diamondbacks. Prevented the Yankees from one in the fourth consecutive. What do you think about it, Ray? The Yankees, of course, we all know the deal. They have lots of money, they spend lots of money, and they like to compete and try to win a World Series every year, but they have made just one World Series appearance in the last 10 years, and that was 2009 when they won. Well, even so that's year. not going to sit well with oh, no. the people who run the Yankees. And we'll say the same thing uh, go down to Anaheim at the end of this road trip because Artem Moreno has said the same thing. They've not been to postseason, much less World Series. 
but they have only won one. And the boss, the late George Steinbrenner, he would not be here. Oh. No, he would not. Last year, the Yankees won 85 and 77. And struggled toward the end of the year, and they missed the postseason for just the second time in the last 19 years. Which coincides with the number of years Derek Jeter has been in Yankee uniform. So no postseason last year. But it's kind of sad too because it meant that Mariano Rivera season ended when the Yankees season ended. As a matter of fact, I don't even think he pitched in Baltimore. I think he just had the uh, homestand finale here and was taken out by half of the four uh, core four, and that was Jeter and Pettit who came out to remove him from the game. Bouncer right side to Shera backs up and he flips to Corona for out number one. Joe Girardi played in the late 90s and actually played with the core four. He played with Rivera, Pettit, Posada, and of course Derek Jeter. Now he's managing the final of the four four, and he'll stay there. He signed through 2017. Excellent catcher. Caught a no hitter, caught a perfect game. Yep. So he's done it all with well, the world championship. And where's the number 28? Because he wore 27. And they won the 27th. Now he's wearing 28, looking for that championship. Yankees this year trailing the Blue Jays by four games in the AL East. Yankees are 29 and 27. Just think if the Yankees had only won single digits in World Championships, then how could Joe Girardi ask for a single digit number that aren't available? That's true. But if they'd only won <laughs> single digits, those guys with single digits numbers probably wouldn't have been that <laughs> good, right? Good point. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Two and oh to Gentry. Sizemore was even with the bag. Now he backs off. 2 0 pitch. Gentry says, Well, I will try to bunt. And he pulled the bat back, but it's called a strike. Well, right now the Yankees are playing without Carlos Beltran who has a bone spur in his elbow. He will be back soon. But that's a big bat they're missing. Mm -hmm. Pitching staff especially the rotation is taking a beating. Sabathia right knee he's out till probably July. Michael Pineda who came back pitched well and now his shoulders bothering him. And Ivan Nova. Had Tommy John surgery he's out for the year. That guy has been terrific. Tanaka. Center field where Ellsbury is under it. He's got it two outs. And if you're a pitcher and you come in to play at Yankee Stadium, if you can get hitters to do that, you're going to win a lot of games. There's your world titles. A's with nine. So they're third on the list. Cardinals with 11 and the Yankees with 27. Seven times. That's amazing. I looked it up by decades, Ray, which I thought was kind of interesting. In the 90s, the Yankees won three. In the 80s, they didn't win any. Yeah, Don Mattingly's years. Yeah. 70s, they won a couple. 60s, they won a couple. It was the 30s, 40s, and 50s when they really did their damage. Gardner is under he's got it so that's a three up three down inning for Hiroki Kuroda and we're going to the bottom of the third one nothing New York.
Right, true story brought to you by McDonald's. A little bit more on the recent Yankee history. Of course, Ray talked about the core four of Posada, of Andy Pettit, Mariano Rivera, the all-time saves leader, and of course, Derek Jeter. 1995 is when it started for Jeter. And it's going to end here in 2014. So that group did a lot of winning. And we talked about the 1980s when they're the Yankees just they 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 weren't bad they just weren't good they were just kind of average but it all changed in the mid 1990s easy big fella he almost did a header right out through the door both seasons played with the Yankees Jeter and Rivera the top two and then Mickey Mantle and Yogi Berra And one to the leadoff man, Brett Gardner, and the first pitch make the second pitch is a strike. So foul ball called strike. It's 0 2 to Gardner, who singled and scored in the first. Gardner's new contract that Ray talked about was a four year, $52 million extension that starts next year. So he signed through 2018. So that's a pretty nice contract for Brett Gardner. Well, he offers a different style of play. He and Ellsbury, with their ability to steal bases and kind of set the table, make things happen, as they did in the first inning. Slaps that one to Donaldson, right at him, throws, and they just get Gardner for out number one. Well, we're here right now. Of course, the late Bob Shepard introducing Derek Jeter, and after what possibly if they make postseason, but regardless, at the end of the 2014 season and slash postseason. Paul Olden will then announce everybody yeah. as Paul Olden does not announce Derek Jeter as long as Jeter is in the Yankees uniform. Like Bob Shepard who what a gentleman he was and as we talked about Roy Steele the voice of God on the West Coast. Bob Shepard the voice of God here and just a great gentleman. And it's nice to hear his voice even though it's on tape every time Jeter comes to the plate. Jeter struck out swinging in the first inning. So Derek Jeter in the Yankees media guide. Obviously a good read. 17 pages <laughs> in the media guide for Derek Jeter. Yeah. Usually a guy gets yeah, two. A little different deal for Jeter. I just think after this year, the media guide would weigh about a pound I was less. Say it's going to be yeah. it's going to be a little smaller. Save right? a lot of a lot of paper. And they love their Derek Jeter here in New York, as they should. And he lines one right into the glove of Sogard, and that's out number two. In Yankees history, pretty good history it is. That's where Jeter ranks. Games hits and stolen bases. He's first. Runs and double. He's second. Well, the most games at shortstop. Second to only Omar Vizquel. He has never played another position. Derek Jeter has not. Matter of fact, with the shift, he stays on the left side of the infield, and that's what really cost him last night, because since he was the only position player on the left side of the infield, Seager hit a ball down the left field line that Gardner made a try to make a diving catch and. Jeter thought it was a foul territory. Kept running down the line. Kind of took the ball with him. Yeah, he kind of scooped it up, yeah. thinking, "Oh, that was foul," and it actually was a fair ball. And I asked him about that, and he said, "I never had that angle because he had always been a shortstop, a different angle going after the ball. He was playing near third, and he had never gone in that direction. But because of the shift, he was positioned in that area." And I said. Was there a possibility of flipping the ball in the stands? He said that was my next move till I heard everybody yelling, throw the ball. <laughs> Including his pitcher. Yeah. They had a shot of <laughs> Phelps, the young right hander, yeah. and and I guess understandably so, but he was yelling, <laughs> throw it, throw it. <laughs> then you're thinking, do you know who you're yelling yeah. at? Well they said that was the only time he would be able to yell at Derek Jeter. <laughs> That's right. Whatever. And he just he came back saying it's foul. Gentry hustling back and 
Gentry grabs it. Ellsbury hit it on the nose, but Kazmir has a three up, three down inning, and we're moving to the fourth. One nothing, New York. Jeter's most famous highlights. That was July 1st of 2004 against the Red Sox. Caught it into the stands, came up, bloodied, battered, but he had the baseball. Heck of a play by Derek Jeter. And that's the angle in which he was running after the ball, unlike being near third base and running down the line. Well, he's. He's special and it's unfortunate in this great game of baseball that when players like Derek Jeter retire who's going to replace him in New York yep. the, the only replacement now is playing for the Mariners named Robbie Cano as this probably would have been his team had he stayed here but he decided to take the 10 year contract with the Mariners and why not a one time through the batting order against Corona the A's just won a single one base hit and eliminated on double play so nine up nine down basically nine batters faced by Corona. See how the A's work through the second time in the batting order. Coco popped out to Sizemore in foul territory, leading off the ball game. Coco, a little seven game hitting streak. He saw his average slip. Well under the 250 mark, but now he's back up over. Forty one pitches for Corota through the first three plus innings, so he has not thrown a lot of pitches. Just getting the double play helps that. And now three and one. I mean you have to figure that he had not been pitching deep in the game because of the pitch counts, but against the A's a team that Will swing at strikes, will not swing a lot of bad pitches. And I think the track strike zone by Chris Cuccione tonight, the low strike, plus the split finger fastball that Corota throws. Pitchers try to take advantage of that. Scott Kazmir has given up with just one run, as he did in his last start. Well, Corota does not walk a lot of guys. He's only walked 11 in 68 innings. So I think he. He's doing and he does what you really have to do against the A's. You got to throw strikes. Otherwise, at some point, the A's will get you. Well, that means this three and two should be a strike. It should be a hittable. Three two pitch. No. So a leadoff walk for Coco Chris. Fans follow every A's game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Yet. 
Let, get live look-ins, instant replay scores, stats, audio, free MLB TV, game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store or visit athletics.com today. They may not be doing it, but uh, playing on the East Coast with West Coast games later, it's a perfect time to take advantage of the app. At that app to be able to watch the games. You know, when you used to come to New York, and the streets are very busy, you walk around, and it's a great place to walk around, but a lot of people busy walking, walking in a hurry. But now it's even more dangerous because everybody's walking, walking, walking in a hurry, and everybody's looking at their cell phone. Yeah, with their head down. With their head down. Yeah, yeah. And if you're the one person that isn't walking, looking at their cell phone, you really got to bob and weave. you got to be careful. Oh, I thought you just ran them over. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just run into him and then. Oh, excuse me, I oh, didn't see. Oh, you. sorry, I, I, I was looking up. You weren't. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh my goodness. Quick throw and Coco just got back. And Teixeira took a glance into the dugout, which. That's yeah. what you see guys do now, and he may have. Well, per, that may have been the, the look. Perotta's on the mound though. And, and he just he just backed off. But, but he's on the dirt, and that negates any possibility. And they, maybe they're out telling him right now, get off the mound, because that is supposed to be a pitch. But I wonder what uh, it, it's that, that's interesting, and, I, and you're right. But what if you obviously you're on the mound when you throw the ball to first base, right? And then if, if they, so, you're saying you, you got to get, get off, off the you mound. You have to get off. And I mean, he's standing on top, and I mean, Joe Girardi's looking in, but basically. He was running and took off and then got caught and couldn't slide, but well, and the umpire is behind him. So that's the reason. And did he see the foot go on the bag? Very close. But you know, he was looking in, but I wonder if the umpire said, you know, your pitcher's standing on top of the mound. And Maybe Coco saw something with Perota because he was headed towards second and had to change direction to the point that he barely got back if he did. Now you actually throw and you follow the ball. I was going to say, you, if, keep if that's the case, you got to get yeah. your butt off the mound. <laughs> Coco with 10 steals and 12 attempts, not going, and the pitch is outside, 2 0. Well, it looks like an, on the 3 2 to Coco, Murphy set up inside, the pitch ran away out of the strike zone. The same thing, and just not following through with the pitches as far as the location inside, especially to the lefties, and that in itself is dangerous if you don't get the ball far enough inside. Not going, and the ball is hit in the air to center. Ellsbury is under it, and that's up. Each of the last three innings, Ellsbury has caught a ball in center field. And again, if you can work that way and try to get hitters to pull the ball and you pitch them away instead of going with the pitch and they try to pull it. Just cannot do it in center field. It's just uh, too much space to roam around. So good hitters park down the line. Yeah, yeah that gets big in the outfield, deep, the deep gaps, and then center field. And I know from experience the old Yankee Stadium trying to pull the outside pitches and just hit fly ball after fly ball to center field, and just feed right into what they were coming, uh, trying to do and accomplish it. So Donaldson hits. Donaldson struck out in the first inning. Solarte, the second baseman, playing right near the bag. Just slightly on the right hand side of second base. Well, the fact that Josh Donaldson, as we saw him in Toronto, go to right center of McGowan, and then it went to right field and center field in the same game against LeBlanc of the Angels. So he might not have to change his swing to try to go to short distance in right field. 
high fly ball foul and it'll reach the seats. Cooling off a little bit. Donaldson as good as anybody, especially for a power hitter at using all fields. Is off, digs in. Which is outside. Donaldson is fourth in the league in home runs. He's fourth in RBIs. He's fifth in walks. He's eighth in slugging, and he's eighth in on base percentage. And he leads the majors. That's right, folks. The majors in runs scored. Seem that hot, does it? It doesn't. <laughs> One hour, twelve minute rain delay to start the ball game. It looks like the thumb up is a uh, sign from Catcher Murphy for Corona to throw to first base. He's already looked in the dugout, so he knows the sign. It's got to be a splitter. He's got that many pitches. You throw all five fingers down, four fingers and thumb. That one tapped. Sizemore, second for one, and a nice turn by Salarte. Wow. Nice. Salarte doing a nice job on the pivot, and it goes as a 5 4 3 double play. 1 nothing Yankees. California is brought to you by 22 Jump Street in theaters June 13th. New York City, that's where we're at for the next couple days. Yankees won A's nothing. Jason Bateman, very good actor, enjoying the game tonight. Arrested Development, Horrible Bosses, a couple of his movies. Couples Retreat, very funny. Listen to you. You know all those. No, I don't. All those he was very funny. Couples were true. To share, pops a foul back. Anything with Vince Vaughn is going to be. <laughs> to share, hit a 
blooper down the right field line that went for a single and it knocked in a run in the first inning. So that's the only run in the game so far. You know, without the aggressive base running by Gardner. They probably wouldn't have scored, but right. he read it perfectly and scored. Otherwise, Asbury fished well to get out of a first and third one out jam. And since then, Casimir hasn't allowed anything since that to share a bloop single. Three six. He's retired nine in a row now. Okay, if we go back to the Saturday game or the Friday game in which. Uh, let's see, that been before that. Tigers had been Tuesday, but Wednesday, whenever he pitched so well, just the Tory Hunter ho uh, home run and kept the one run for nine innings, and that allowed his club to come back and. That's all a pitcher can ask, or you can ask of a pitcher, is just keep it down to the point that you're not giving up one, keep your club in a game, and give the club offense a chance to come back. Two and oh to Solarte. Three and oh to Solarte. Larte's never been in the big leagues till this year and now doing a very nice job for the Yankee Storiano on day. So Larte the last couple of years with the Texas Rangers organization. It's amazing how you, you just never know. You get a guy and he was in the minor leagues for eight years. No swing and he's got a walk. He hustles to first base, almost sprints to first base. That's what happens when you've been in the minor leagues for eight years. <laughs> also taking the change up and selling it by getting out of the box quickly. Gotta go. Yep, here we go. <laughs> Ricky Keller, the first base coach, said, I like you, kid. Keep doing that. That's right. Now, but you're right. You, you spent a lot of time in the minor leagues. You, you oh. taste the big leagues and you know the pressure's also playing in New York, but Seems to handle it well with the numbers he's put up already. Well, plus, I mean, and, you know, we don't know what this young man's going to do the rest of the year, but you look around and you're saying, well, Cano's gone. Yep. And they signed Brian Roberts, but, you know, Brian Roberts isn't going to play every day and he's hitting under 250. Hey, maybe I get a chance to yep. play more than I thought I would. I don't think Brian Roberts is a long term answer. Soriano takes a fastball for a strike. That does not happen very often. It's because he was looking change up. He'd seen so many change ups. Four, saw four in his first at bat. Then he ended up striking out on one of the dirt runners at first and third. Then a change up first pitch. And this at bat. And then the fastball. Took another one and it's one and two. <laughs> you guess and you guess wrong. You're, you're taking pitches that you're normally are really questioning what it might be doing. That's how good the change is. Change of this from Scott Casper. They can throw it that often. And that one a fastball on the inside corner. So here's the question, Ray. Has Alfonso Soriano <laughs> ever took three? <laughs> Fastballs for strikes without swinging the bat. Only if he was looking for changeups. <laughs> it hasn't happened a lot. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Wow. And they were all. I mean, they all look like pretty good yeah. pitches. Huh. Here's Sizemore. Sizemore taps one to Donaldson. He'll go the short way. Side retired. So a one-out walk, no damage done, and we're headed to the fifth inning at Yankee Stadium. One nothing, New York.
CSNCA fan photo. Put your name down in your hometown. You get a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's all brought to you by AT&T. Chris and Heather Connor from Vallejo. Check it out. It's the Athletics Cake Topper. They were married on October 13th of 2013, and they went with the Athletics Cake Topper. We appreciate that. Chris and Heather from Connor from Vallejo. Keep taking those photos and keep sending them in. And we'll do our best to get them on. It's the AT&T fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. Fifth inning, Moss, Suspidus, and Lowry. corota has been good so far. He's walked one. He has struck out one. He's got a couple of double plays. And the best thing Brandon Moss can do is drive a, a ball to left center, a line drive, because they're going to stay outside. Watch Murphy again outside. Two seam fastball, the back door cutter there. But all you have to do is watch Murphy, the catcher, and especially with a power left handed hitter. He sets up outside. He's trying to tempt the hitter to take advantage of the short porch in right field and pop up a ball to center field. That's why Moss can drive it. And then a fastball that catches the inside corner. So that's a tough pitch. You yeah. start leaning a little bit, thinking yeah. about right. a pitch outside, and then Corona plants one right inside. And that's the importance of a catcher watching the hitter and his feet. One two pitch. Drops down and away. They come back inside and they do and it missed low I guess. That's the only thing it could have been because the ball tailed back looked like it had the corner but Miss Guccione looking right at it. That shot looked a little low. That was hit hard but foul. Corona's got pretty good sink on all of his pitches. That was the same pitch he threw Donaldson and went to put down five, which looked on the board it showed 87. Split 23% of the time. Fastball, of course, the two and four seam fastball half the time. So that pitch that we're seeing, Ray, that's 87, 88. That's the splitter. You know, I, like. I, I, it, I thought it would be, but I don't know that it is because it's not moving down like a splitter. In fact, he threw one that was 88. That maybe it's just a good sinking fastball. Exactly. Who knows? But it's surprising to see a catcher use five thumb and four fingers to get a sign. Just spreads his entire hand out. Three-two pitch set up outside. And that one's hit toward right center and hit a ton. Ellsbury's going back. And that baby's gone. And this game is tied at one. Is he good or what? Wow. Got Kazmir happy. Look at the shot of this one. That ball did not get out where the first strike had. We saw him go to left center. This time he got the top end a little bit more towards right center and a fastball. And that's the difference towards the 385 versus towards the 399 in left center. And Brandon Moss hit nine in the month of May. He's now hit his first in June. It's his first game he's played. So 14 total on the year. to get his bat back in the lineup. And if he's running that well, which is not bad, it seemed to be even on the ball he hit to center field in his first at bat, seemed to be running quite well down the line. So one and one the count to Cespedes. Cespedes had a base hit to right field in the second inning. Fouled right at the plate. 67th home run for the A's on the season. They're second in the American League in that category. They lead the American League in run score. 
297 now on the year. Their first in walks, first in on base percentage. One two pitch swing and a miss he struck him out see that's the pitch right there that we're kind of talking about where it's 88 miles an hour and it it has some sink to it but I think this is the splitter okay see how it went down I think so too and, and a lot of times too you can watch the catcher especially with two strikes because the catcher will get up in a position as if he knows if the splitter is thrown correctly it's going to be in the dirt and he has to block it with two strikes and that's why as we have talked about I was talking about pitchers tipping pitches but catchers can do it as well in the positioning they're set up behind the plate. But that's a hard splitter that he throws, which uh, maybe does not wrap his fingers so much around that it becomes like a fork ball, which slows it down. Brandon Moss got a fastball. And Derek Norris couldn't play for the Yankees. <laughs> no, he could, but he'd have to shave. He hit a lot of home runs here. Yes, he would. Yeah, okay, I was thinking about the 1972 World Series. The Reds and the A's, they call them the hares and the squares. Uh -huh. Well, you play in the Yankees, and in most teams other than the Yankees, it, it can look like that. It's no problem. Derek Norris with the beard, the long hair, but the Yankees, I saw Brendan Ryan, didn't recognize him. <laughs> what a play by Ryan, the shortstop. So a bullet off the bat of Lowry, but. Ryan made a very nice leaping catch. Well, he's positioned perfectly and good hitting attempt by Jed Lowry going that direction, coming right at you, and a great leap, great hang time, and Ryan brought it down. It's headed towards left center. Might have been another double if it had kept going, but you know, Ryan clean shaven and all. Maybe that helped him jump as high as he did. It's a great play. That ball was past him. Yep. That makes it an even better play. So two outs, and here's Kiaspo. Kiaspo bounced out to Teixeira. He's in the third inning. Thing with Corona Ray, his career record is 72 and 73. But you look at his ERAs, his years with the Dodgers and with the Yankees, he's always had a pretty good ERA. But for some reason, he's that guy that the team does not always score runs for. So Moss with a long home run. And for Moss, it was his 14th of the year. We want to take another look at it. This game is tied at one.
Sunday, June the 22nd. Don't wait. Get great seats now at athletics.com slash tickets. That means Johnny Gomes will be back showing off his world championship ring. Big Poppy has three. And they'll be playing at the Coliseum. And their only appearance during the regular season to the Coliseum. So Moss with the home run. He's the designated hitter tonight, so he stays in the dugout. Casimir's been good as he faces John Ryan Murphy, the young catcher. Ryan McCann, of course, is the Yankees normal catcher. McCann not in the lineup. We talked in the, during the pregame show and a little bit earlier about all the changes that the Yankees have made. There's Brian McCann in the offseason. It, it, it's it's really startling the amount of players that left from last year. Let me listen to this list, Ray. Cano, Granderson, Rodriguez, Euclid, Hafner, Pettit, Rivera, Hughes, Logan, Chamberlain, Overbay, Wells, and Chris Stewart. Those guys were all wow. in the Yankees last year, not with them this year. Lowry scoops, throws in time, and that's out in the morning. And would you would you attach a, a dollar sign to those? Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, coming in, the first thing, of course, the writer is around here talking about. Even with all the, the name changes that you mentioned, the Yankees payroll is still about 120 million more than the Athletics. Well, but they're, they're not replacing those guys with young players no. from their minor league no. system. They're replacing with with star players. Ellsbury, New, McCann, Beltran, Roberts, Tanaka, Matt Thornton. They signed the relief pitcher, so. Big name guys. Brian McCann got eighty five million dollars. Yeah. Carlos Beltran who is on the disabled has got forty five million. Tanaka one hundred fifty five. So it wasn't like they did respend the money. But it's always the question of did you spend it in the right way. Roger Clemens always say the Yankees don't rebuild they reload and, and that's, that's reloading it's reloading yeah. Oh one pitch off the foot of Brendan Ryan so now it's on two And of course Rivera retired a curveball, one of the rare curveballs tonight thrown by Scott Kansberry, and it's come to the right hander Brian or uh, Brendan Ryan, who fouled the ball off his foot. Ryan, you remember, of course, the Cardinals that went to Seattle, saw him there playing so well at shortstop. That was acquired by the Yankees. Of course, it allows the Yankees to DH the captain, Derek Jeter. And Ryan, a good defensive shortstop. To pitch a fastball outside, one and two. I think the Yankees got Brendan Ryan and then signed him to a two year contract, so they like what he can do. He's not going to hit a lot, but he is good at short. And that's the important thing. You, you look at defense and the importance of defense, especially strong up the middle, and Brendan Ryan definitely offers that. And so, Larger, as you mentioned, uh, getting a chance to play. A lot at second base, and as far as the future, you figure he's going to get that opportunity. Fastball right down around the knees, strike three called. Ryan is arguing with Guccione. Guccione generally has a fairly short fuse, so you may want to be careful if you're Brendan Ryan. Well, he is walking. Guccione is walking towards the dugout, but Brendan Ryan thought, but you know, that strike has been called low, or the low strike has been called that with the stride. And he's saying that ball is down, man. And of course, he was upset when he struck out, swung at a change up his previous at bat. He thought he had another chance, shocked when Guccione called him out. But if you talk about consistency, Guccione's been consistent both sides with the low strike. It's a question what that DVD will show when the game is over. Oh, and one to Gardner, who has singled and scored and bounced out to Donaldson. Bottom of the fifth inning. From Yankee Stadium, good ball game, one to one. Casimir gave up the one run on three hits in the first inning. He has not allowed a hit since then. 
Major League Base runner was Solarte's one out walk in the fourth inning. Casimir's at it again. He's pitching great. You know, Kaifa is talking to him about his velocity, and sometimes he's that he, he throws a harder fastball, 75 pitches total, but he said everything revolves around his lower body, waist down. And he says if he tries to throw too hard, he opens up too much and balls end up all over the place. So he'd rather calm down, throw with less velocity, and do something like that. You know? Get his A strikeout. That's what he just did. So we're on to the sixth inning pitcher's duel. It's 1 1 after 5. Sponsor the Oakland A's, KellyMoore.com. Bring inspiration home. Chrysler Building, one of just a few skyscrapers. Just a few. Can't get away from them. One to one, top of the sixth inning. Gentry, Sogard, and Crisp for the A's. Gentry hit a fly ball to center field his first time up. Corona has walked one and struck out two. Nice if uh, Frank Gentry could get on base somehow with Sogard hitting behind him that he could do so many things hit and run sacrifice. That's why Gentry is a leadoff hitter even though he's hitting eighth would be that's perfect. Second leadoff hitter. So Gentry will go for a little walk. Sogard to follow. And you're right. If well, if Gentry gets on, you got options. Pitch number 72 coming up for Corona, and here it is. That's a splitter. That's a splitter. That was the old 88 89 mile hour splitter and try to block it Murphy and hope to catch her the hitter doesn't swing. That should be a slider. And there it was and it just misses off the plate. Good take by yeah. Greg Gentry. Yeah that's that's a chase slider but two and two. And Started at the outside corner, and that's where you try to pick up the spin. It's the size of a dime, the, the red dot of the seams creating that spin. Broken bat, and Corona grabs it, flips to first, one out. 
Well, the Chevron personal credit card gets you free A's tickets at the Collison box office. Purchase an A's ticket at regular price. Show your Chevron personal credit card and get a second ticket of equal value free. Limit of two free tickets per customer per game. Tickets subject to availability and additional restrictions apply. Go to ChevronCars.com to learn more and apply for the credit card. This offer is administered by Chevron USA Incorporated. Here's Sogard. Sogard hit a fly ball to Gardner in left field in the third. The Astros are leading the Angels five to nothing in the top of the fourth inning in Houston. That's the first of three game series. Wilson and McHugh, the starting pitchers in that one. So the Astros laying it on the Angels early. And the Astros might be 11 behind the A's, but they're getting a lot of attention, aren't they? Sure. It's uh, the signing of a young man who's their next phenom. Jonathan Singleton, the left-handed hitting first baseman who's making his major league debut tonight. He's hitting sixth in the lineup. I know he walked with the bases loaded to get an RBI. It's a great start. Yeah. Little pop up, and Ryan is under. What, what Ray's talking about is Jonathan Singleton, who is was called up yesterday and as soon as he was called up he signed a five year ten million dollar contract with three club options and I don't know that that's ever happened no. before five year contract it's never played a game in the big leagues right. very interesting and very controversial Agents are screaming like, oh my gosh, that that's shock? the stupidest thing anybody could ever do. That's not shocking. And <laughs> I guess you sort of see their point, of but course, yeah. you're guaranteeing a young man $10 million as well. So it's it's interesting. It's a good conversation piece, if nothing else. But you know, let's let's uh, look at Thursday. Now they have certain slots for draft choices. Uh -huh. Now, essentially you're doing the same thing because the top draft pick can get, I don't know, whatever it depends on how yeah, much. Yeah, there's yeah. a certain amount you're allowed to spend. Yeah. But essentially, all those players are getting a lot of money, especially if you're number one choice, a lot of money, and you've never put on a professional uniform yet. That's and true. so, you know, what they're doing with this young man, you know, that's pretty good security for him. It's great for the for the uh, Astros sure. if he pans out. But, you know, how do you say no to that kind of money if you're a player? And it's interesting because they made the same offer to George Springer, their young right fielder, who looks like he's going to be a very fine player. But they made the same offer to him earlier this year, and he said no. So you have one young man who says, "No, I'm going to, I'm going to wait," uh, and you have another young man who says, "I'm going to take it." Right. So, so the Astros have tried with both guys. One took it, one did not. So Jonathan Singleton, he's a power hitting first baseman, bats from the left side, and it's the Astros' newest big prospect to be called up. One two pitch outside. That was Scott Sizemore, the third baseman, moving over to the second base position. It's a shortstop staying his spot in the lineup uh, on the defense. And they just threw a nice two seam sinker outside, trying to get him to hit the ball at the left field. <laughs> against the ship and Coco will do that. This, this is surprising because Coco is not your prototypical full hitter because he waits so long. We've seen him shoot balls down the left field line. Spray charts I guess show that Coco will roll over against certain pitchers and pitches and did not offer it the two seam fastball away from. Him. Coco walked in the fourth. Two two pitch and that one's bounced. Kurt Salarte who grabs it, side retired. So that's a three up, three down inning. Six in a row retired by Corona since the home run. Bottom of the six coming up, 1 1 game.
Yankees came on this bloop by Mark to share the first inning. Gardner read it well, scored from second. As Ellsbury went to third, but Scott Kesbury got out of it thanks to pitches like this. Good change up to Brendan Ryan for a strikeout. Josh Donaldson rolled over on a pitch. 5 4 3 double play turned by the Yankees with Corota on the mound. And that is Salardi. And Sizemore, but how about this guy? Brandon Moss back in the lineup after missing a couple of games due to a calf injury. That was after he hit the grand slam against Richards, and here he is back in the lineup tonight. He does it again, hits a home run. So that's it. Five hits total, a couple of runs, and Scott Kazmir pitching a gem. Last five starts, 1.84 ERA, and he faces part of the order Jeter, Ellsbury, and Teixeira. Jeter, a strikeout and a lineout. Fastball, a bit outside, 2 and 0. Ray, were you surprised when Derek Jeter came out in, gosh, what was it, January, right? And said, This is it, I'm retiring. Well, then he made the announcement even, I guess, before the season yeah. started, even before spring training started. You know, I was curious about it and asked him about it today during batting practice, and he was very nice about it. I mean, because, you know, Derek Jeter has been inundated for all these years with the New York media, I mean, costly. And he brought up the fact that in his last contract before he signed this newest extension, he said every day the New York media said, are you going to retire? Is this the last year? And so he said, the reason I announced it this year is because it's the final year of my contract. And had I not done it, they would have asked me sure, every, every day, day yeah. every day. Is this your last year? Is this your last year? So he said as much as, you know, he's not that type to want to have the fanfare in every city, even though he deserves it because when he leaves, that's that's a, that's sure. a great baseball yep. player and a great uh, player with the game of baseball and, and kind of ambassador with the game. So he really eliminated what would yeah. be an everyday, yeah. everyday yeah. question to him and to the front office exactly. as well. To everybody. So he just said this was going to be it, and he announced it. And I think, you know, you saw what happened with Mariano Rivera last year. Derek Jeter deserves. You don't spend your entire career in one uniform. It's very rare these days that that happens. So. If that's the case, as you make your final tour and they'll be at the Coliseum for the Father's Day weekend, his final game ever at the Coliseum, of course, uh, pending any possible postseason this year. But that is, uh, I mean, a great player. I mean, you look at his entire career. He started 95, the 96 rookie of the year. Every year but two, he's been in postseason. I mean, for a guy who went so long without not going to postseason. What do you do when the season's over and you don't play in October? It's hard to imagine, but he experienced that twice in his illustrious career. Kiaspo scoops it up. Ellsbury's retired two outs. But I, you know, like you, I was very curious as to sure. why, you know, and having the opportunity to, to ask him and, you know, again, he's very cordial and just said that I just did not want to go through it every day. And you can't blame him for that. Nope. But Every once in a while, a player comes along that is a terrific ambassador Absolutely. for the game of baseball, and he is one of them, and I think those guys should be honored. Well, and for fans around the American League and some of the National League cities with the interleague play, it gives them an opportunity to say thank you for a great career and uh, being that special player in baseball. That one's hit to left, and that's trouble. Cespedes is going back, and it is gone. To Shara. Homers and the Yankees grab the lead back two to one. And you just hope there's going to be enough on the line drive a top spin to bring it down, but it stayed up. And Mark share does not hit a lot from the right side, but he's a very good hitter, and I would say a very good guess hitter. And he guessed correctly. He got it. Top hand pulled it. And with his strength, at least the top hand, and is able to drive it out to left center. So, 10th home run for Teixeira. And he's running like he didn't think it was gone either, just because it's hit in the direction at 399 to left center, and you, you don't see a lot leave the yard in that area. There's Salarte who has lined out and walked. 
And that's a base hit to left field. So Salarte has a base hit. 36th career home run against the Athletics. To share all those years with the Rangers. In his career, Ray, 351 home runs now. So he jumps ahead of Chili Davis. Yeah, Chili right. probably knows that too. He's probably not happy about that. I bet he's. He'll probably let Scott Kazmer know when he comes <laughs> in off the, <laughs> off the field. <laughs> Soriano swings and misses it. Soriano right now is, if he could scratch his head, he would. But his helmet's in the way. If he had any hair to pull out, he would, but he has none. So, I mean, he's, he saw all change-ups his first at bats, all fastballs his second, and now back-to-back change-ups here. And another changeup, and he swings and misses. He missed it by a bunch. Teixeira with a home run, his 10th of the year. So the Yankees now have the lead 2-1 to one after 6. Yankees two and the A's one. To share his home run has given the Yankees the lead back. He could have waited until the A's left town. He didn't have yeah. to come back and play tonight. So as I say, he didn't have to come back into no. the lineup, but he did. Kelly Johnson was playing. He could have played first base. See? No, don't do that. No, I thought he was going to whack himself in the head. 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. That's what it'll do to you. Just don't make a mistake to him. No, that's true. He's still scary. So Jason Donaldson and Moss against Hiroki Kuroda, who's retired six in a row since the Moss home run. The Orioles are leading the Rangers two to one in the bottom of the sixth inning in Arlington. So the Rangers starting a nine game homestand after finishing up. A long road trip. In fact, without Prince Fielder, the Rangers had a seven and four road trip, so they're trying to get something going. Rangers a game over 500. In a case of Prince Fielder out for the season, there are times when a player goes on the disabled list, and you can say, "Well, his so-and-so is coming back. He's coming back," you know. But they know he's not coming back this year, so they have to play accordingly. Whoever is filling yep. in, well, play and. They'll get him back healthy for the future. They also sounds like jerks and profile is definitely out yep. for the year as well. Yeah, that's two big losses, but you know, injuries occur in the game. It's unfortunate, but they do happen. Jay so takes outside three and one. 
We'll see the Orioles this weekend in Baltimore. Well, that young man right there, Batansis, Ellen Batansis, is something to watch. And he looks like the A's may get a chance to see him strike. Didn't have to be, and now it's three and two. John Jason looked at the ball tailing away from him and does a good job of taking it and just kept running outside. Slight angle that we have. So according to Chris Guccione, the angle that he had showed enough of a strike. Three two pitch to Jaso. Foul back. But don't ask Chris Guccione if it's a strike. He'll say yes. Yeah, of course it <laughs> So pitch number 89 coming up from Corona. And here it is. And it's bounced towards second. Salarte slides to his right. He's got it. So one out. And let's look at tomorrow's pitching probables brought to you by Chevron. Care for your car. Chavez and Nuno. Del Nuno, a left hander. Jesse Chavez, 4 and 3, 2.78. So that is your Chevron pitching matchup for tomorrow. It'll be an ESPN game tomorrow night. And then we'll be back with you here on Comcast Sportsnet California on Thursday for day baseball from Yankee Stadium. And then on to Baltimore. Oh, and one to Donaldson, who has struck out and hit into a double play. Astros still leading the Angels five to nothing, top of the fifth inning. Three infielders left side of the diamond and that one's hit down the right field line and hit well but foul. So see how quickly that 314 yeah. comes. And a fastball inside and Josh Donaldson open up and dropped the head of the bat on it just sliced it a little bit too much. I mean, that ball went seven eight rows back. Yeah. Reminiscent of his walk up against the Tigers last year whenever. Hit it right down the right field line. See Donaldson would hit a ton of home runs to right field in this yes, ballpark because he's got plenty of power and he goes that way. One two pitch lined into the glove of Salarte and that's out number two. Well I will say what the Yankees have done tonight they position their infielders to the point that. Uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, Judge Rod is not going to let him face Brandon Moss again, is he? But the infielder's position, look where Solardi is, and if he's normal position, that's an easy base hit up the middle. And it looked like it fooled him a little bit, but he's going to handle it. Rob him up extra base, at least the base hit. So, Corona, very good tonight, six and two thirds innings, and he's going to leave with a two to one lead. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change in tuna. The oil change tune-up and smog experts.
home of the most live sports. And by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. Back here at Yankee Stadium, the Yankees with a two to one lead over the A's and the Yankees have gone to their bullpen and it's Dellen Batansis. And just look at the numbers folks. 56 strikeouts in 32 and two thirds innings. That is hard to believe. He's 6'8, 260 pounds, and I think the Yankees have been waiting for this guy to put it all together for a while, and he finally has. Numbers on Corota, just two hits. One of those, a solo home run by this hitter, Brandon Moss. So there's your heater after first pitch slider. Throws it about 98, 94 to 98 with the slider slash slur. But Brandon Moss started. Couldn't pull the trigger. 0 oh 2. The time test delivers, and there's that hard slider in the dirt. He's from New York. Drafted by the Yankees in 2006. The Yankees may have found their setup man and maybe their future closer. 1 2 pitch, and that was nasty, folks. And Moss swings and misses. So Batanta strikes out Moss and it's seventh inning stretch time at Yankee Stadium, two to one New York. A two to one lead. Garota's out of the game. Scott Kazmir still pitching. Celebrate the A's speedy center fielder with your very own Coco Crisp Garden Gnome presented by Grant Thornton LLP. Get your tickets now for the A's Red Sox game. Sunday, June 22nd. 20,000 fans will go home with a Coco Gnome. Sounds great. Coco Gnome. <laughs> for information and tickets, visit athletics.com slash tickets today. Coco's put on a little weight, hasn't he? Yeah, it does. It's not Coco. He's Coco looks like he's that. Been, yeah, he looks like he's been out of the league for 15 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that is not Howie Long, folks. That is not him. But that's his jersey. And so Scott Kazmir gave up a run in the first and then the Teixeira home run in the sixth. Teixeira has both RBIs. He can face. Soriano every at bat, he'd have a perfect game. Just mix up fastballs and change ups, keep him guessing. 
So 90 pitches for Kazmir as he goes to work here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Kazmir making sure everybody's in the right spot, but the umpires are getting everybody the proper amount of time, including the advertisers. There's CC Sabathia working on that right knee. Vallejo's own CC Sabathia and should be back, they hope, by July. Good fastball right on the inside corner to Sizemore. So 0 and 2, Sizemore a strikeout and a ground out. Casimir. He's all around that strike zone. The Mariners are leading the Braves 7 to 5 in the bottom of the ninth inning in Atlanta. So Fernando Rodney is in trying to save it for Seattle. Seattle has won three in a row. There's a shot to left field and a base hit. Sizemore with a leadoff single here in the bottom of the seven. Yeah, not a lot of curveballs thrown by Scott Casper tonight as Fernando Abad gets loose. Kind of a hanging breaking ball right into the wheelhouse of Scott Sizemore. And that's what he does with it after seeing fastballs and change ups predominantly tonight from this left hander. So here's John Ryan Murphy. First pitch is high. The Marlins beat the Rays one to nothing in Miami. So the Rays continue to struggle. They have now lost eight in a row. And they are 13 games under the 500 mark, Tampa Bay. Hard to believe. And that's not the worst of it. Will Myers today placed on the disabled list, and he's going to be out for two months. Hurt his wrist out of play in the outfield in Boston. Two months they're going to be without Will Myers. Stress fracture? Stress fracture in his wrist. Yeah. Nothing going right for the Rays at this point. Two and oh to Murphy as he takes a long look down to Rob Thompson, the third base coach for the Yankees. And the Blue Jays doing exactly what the Rays hope nobody would do in the Eastern Division. That's kind of run away with it because they are playing so well, they have a pretty good lead. And now it's 3 and 0. Well, Scott Kazmir is paying attention, it seems, too much to Scott Sizemore at first base because he's not following through with his pitches. And you want to I'm going to put this guy on to bring up Ryan because that will open up the possibility of a sacrifice to put a couple runners in score position with Brendan Ryan. Take it all the way, and that's a strike. Here's your updated East stands. Well, that, that's the standings going into today. A four game lead for the Blue Jays. Missed outside and it's a walk. So two on and nobody out. And but if you're the Yankees, you couldn't ask for a better spot. Now you got your ninth place hitter coming up. He can bun and then you get the top of the order. You know, that's what happens when the bottom of your order can get something right. going for you. So here's Ryan. He has struck out twice. Butts it and he butts it foul. It hit him, but it hit him in the batter's box. Well, he did something there that you really don't want to see a hitter do. It looked like he waited and wanted to try to drag the ball almost for a base hit. Got the bad angle. 
and kicked the ball while it was in the batter's box. But I mean, this is a true sacrifice yeah. if there ever was. You're not trying to no, trick anybody. No, you just square around and. You, you're going to try to bunt the ball to third anyway, forcing Donaldson to field the ball. And if that's the case, square around. Everybody figures you're going to bunt anyway. You might as well do it by squaring around. Brett Gardner is the on deck hitter. Not bunting that time, and the pitch is outside, one and one. Brought it back, tried to get the bat angle, but that showed him out of the box a little bit slower. But in essence, he waited a long time before he squared around. And when Skazmer threw the ball a second, he had squared around, so maybe George Girardi took it off, figured he had already tipped that he was going to be bunting, but I'd say the nose anyway. He did it again. Yeah. Just squaring around very late. And we saw Ron Washington have Mitch Moreland bunt with two strikes against Sean Doolittle. But man, how could you bring the bat back? That ball was right down the middle. <laughs> we'll see if he bunts with two strikes. Donaldson thinks so. Is he still even with the bat creeping up? It's happened to you once. You automatically think, well, his job is to sacrifice and takes three to do it. He's going to do it. Swinging away and it's inside. So now the count two and two. Sizemore at second, Murphy at first. Ryan fouls it right side into the upper deck and it takes a big bounce all the way down into the lower deck. Mariners won that game in Atlanta seven to five. They were down four nothing after one inning. Seattle came back. So the Mariners get their fourth consecutive win. And he lays off fastball up and away. So now full count. And all of a sudden in this inning, everything is away from the right handers and not following through. And you have to be concerned that a changeup called, he might let it drift away from the right hander. Sometimes maybe losing a little bit, getting a little bit tired. It's over 100 pitches. Force him to pitch inside, force him to follow through. And the pitch, and it's tapped foul. And Ryan may have swung at ball four. It looked like it was a little bit low. So 106 pitches now for Casimir. That ties a season high for him. Well, and this might be his last batter with a couple of lefties coming up after. Actually, Gardner and then the righty Jeter. Cook joins Abad. Abad might be getting ready for Gardner, depending on what happens in this at bat. Runners were not running on the first three and two. Not running this time. Foul back in. Well, so this may be one of those innings, Ray, where if you're Bob Melvin, you have to do everything you can to keep it a one run deficit. Absolutely. Because the A's are very good in the late innings. They have great ability to come back. So pitch number 108 coming up from Casimir. And here it is. And it's right there, strike three call. Pull the string. Great change up. Melvin, that's going to be the last pitch as he is up off his chair and headed down. And a bond to get the Gardner. Perfectly thrown change up. And 
Brendan Ryan has struck out now three times the last two called third strikes. And the arms go up. That said, I'm fooled. Yep. And I hope it's not a strike, but it was. So when it's time for change, take speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up at Spog Experts. the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group LLC. Well Scott Casbier a season high 10 strikeouts he was very good tonight but he is not going to get a win. 22nd time in his career he has struck out 10 or more. So he pitched very well but at this point trailing two to one. So Fernando Abad comes in and he's going to face Gardner two on one out Yankees with a one run lead. And Bob Melvin could have told him we got Jeter in the on deck circle. Ryan Cook is warming up. Fernando Abad your job is to get Brett Gardner and I think well spoken pack about keeping it one run and we saw what happened as Casimir's last start down by one scored three in the ninth inning with the walk off but. You keep it close, gives you so many options, and this is a big batter for Abad. Gardner singled and scored in the first, grounded out in the third, struck out in the fifth. So Abad. With a check and the first pitch to Gardner is a bit inside with a breaking ball. Gardner splits this year. Interesting. He's hitting 264 against right handed pitching, but he's hitting 311 against left handed pitching. Side again, and that was another breaking ball, and that didn't really break at all, and it just kind of floated inside. Two and zero. Oh. And Gardner set up there as if to say, "Go ahead, hit me if you want to." And he would take it, but that's pretty impressive there. Nine from nine stranding runners in scoring position, and right now after missing two with two curveballs, Brett Gardner is going to uh, enhance his ability to hit a fastball by looking for it. Just a question whether it's a strike or he swings. It was a strike. He did not swing. Almost wonder after seeing him take this pitch as if he was not able to pick up the pitch out of the, the hand of a bod. So throwing him a couple of breaking pitches and missing. Now he gets to know what a fastball looks like. And that one's hit high and foul into the second level. Notice how Brett Gardner just kind of throws his bat. He does. You know, yeah. just you know, flips it, at it. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's kind of a uh, watch, watch as he just goes after it, and it just throw it, release the top hand, and 
Try to serve it wherever it's going. Pull the ball, pull his hands in on the first inning, pulling a Casimir fastball down the right field line. Seemed like he could release his hands and throw the bat every pitch. Yep. Strike three called with a fastball, 94 miles an hour. Good pitch by Abad, and that's the second out. Well, and that's a perfectly thrown fastball, and Bob Melvin is not moving. So they're looking at the splits of Abad facing righties. And of course, the good fastball, he threw three excellent fastballs after missing with the two curveballs. So with Ellsbury in the on deck circle, maybe that is what Bob Melvin is looking at, saying that Jeter in between the two lefties, uh, Ellsbury hitting third, and the switch hitting Teixeira behind him. Jeter is 0 for 3. Strikeout, line out, ground out. And the first pitch is hit to center field. Coco's back to his left. He's got it side retired. So Jeter 0 for 4, and the Yankees strand a pair. We're headed to the eighth inning. Yankees 2, A's 1. player of the game your vote counts the winner will be revealed during A's post game live follow the action on the diamond like never before with enhanced Bloomberg stats and more A's in game live on CSN California.com log on now and vote it's the Yankees two and it's the A's one and it's the top of the eighth inning so the A's gonna have to come back here in the late innings Ichiro Suzuki takes over in right field. So Soriano is out of the game. And Matanzas is back in there. He faced Moss and struck him out to end the seventh inning. First pitch slider and it snaps in there first strike. Well, you can see where that's his strikeout pitch. Yeah, right. I mean, it's still 98. Why are you flipping up sliders? Because everybody's looking 98. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Can't catch up, so you can throw the slider for a strike. And that one cued. It's got some English on it. Salarte so throws out Cespedes. I couldn't hit it crisply enough to hit the ball into right field. So one out here in the top of the eighth inning. Of course, the Yankees' closer is David Robertson. Well. They're looking at this young man as the, as you said, possible closer in the future. But similar to Marion Rivera, Rivera at one time was a starting pitcher, became an all-time great closer, 600 plus saves. Shelly Davis saw this young man in the International League when he's with the Boston Red Sox. Oh. Remembers, and he said, 
It's not going to be long before he's oh, yeah. up there. Well, he's been one of their one of their big prospects for a while now, and he's had a couple stints in the big leagues, and he just did not really pitch very well. Something clicked, and well, it's working now. 98 miles an hour. He is a big, big fella. Six foot eight, 260 pounds. Kind of looks like the big closer for the Dodgers, Kenley Jansen, mm -hmm. just big and imposing. Yeah. Two and one the count to Lowry, who is 0 for 2. That one's in first strike. So we saw 98, that pitch 82 miles an hour. And if you can throw the slider consistently in the strike zone with that kind of fastball, you're going to freeze a lot of hitters as we have seen so far. And there it is, struck him out. So Batanz has faced three hitters. He has struck two of them out. And with the slider. And that almost is a curveball going down like it did. Well, you saw the note. 46% of the outs that Batanzas has recorded have been strikeouts. That slider misses outside. Not quite as sharp with that pitch. I asked for a couple of ground outs tonight. Fouls that one had a good swing. You know what they say, Cap? You know, if you had this kind of pitcher, get him out of there. And so, worst case, I see Roberts in the ninth inning. Yeah. And that's not an easy task either, yeah. but I got to believe he's not as tough as this guy. No. And keeping it one. Run is the most important thing. The A's would like to tie it in this inning, but if not, take it into the ninth, trailing by one. One two pitch. Slider down and away. Two and two. The Rangers have tied up the Orioles. It's now a 2 2 game in Arlington, top of the eighth inning. Drive and it's just foul. So that was a fastball. Gentry would be next if Kiaspo can somehow get on. And the slider spins outside, not by much, three and two. Really not where. The catcher Murphy wanted it. Uh, he wanted to follow through and he didn't go down and in like he did with the Lowry pitch. And he missed again with a slider. So that, that, that I think, man, you, you, if you had better control with a fastball, or maybe he feels more comfortable throwing the slider, especially if he could throw it in the vicinity of the strike zone. Gentry's got to be called back for a pinch hitter. Stephen Bolt's going to pinch hit. Bring another lefty up against him with the right field porch, as short as it is. Maybe get into one. And Bob Mellon said he wanted to help the bench with a little bit more. Left handed, right handed, just in general, healthy bodies. And with Josh Reddick being put on the disabled list today. At least Bolt, who was called up Sunday, Fernando Rodriguez was option. So Volt will see if he can come up with a big hit here in the top of the eighth inning. Gentry was 0 for 2 in his two at bats. First pitch to Vote is low, another slider.
Well, the more he throws the slider, maybe the more that Stephen Vogt can look fastball after he misses with the slider, load up a little bit early, and maybe hook one into the right field seats. The fastball is high, and now it's 2 and 0. Oh. I guess the first pitch slider is great as long as you throw it for a strike. If you yeah. don't, then you're already behind in the count. And now it's 2 0. Oh. The second pitch was a fastball that missed. Larry Rothschild, the pitching coach, former manager of the Tampa Bay Rays. Very knowledgeable pitching coach who became a manager. And there's a catcher who became a manager, Joe Girardi. They're all over the place. Yeah. But Larry Rothschild having to deal with not CeCe Sabathia, not Andy Pettit, not A.J. Burnett, <laughs> it's CC on the disabled list, but a lot of young pitchers coming up for the Yankees. And when you're drafting this year at number 55 in the second round, then it's hard to fortify your minor league system with. It's kind of draft choice. Yeah. Draft coming up on Thursday. So big day for lots of youngsters. Just the first round on Thursday, right? Supplemental and first round. First round supplemental. Yeah. Outside. And you're going to be representing the athletics. That's which is right. exciting. Yeah. So you'll be heading over to the MLB Network yeah. studios. So that's exciting. For a long night. That's right. Oakland A's are on the clock. <laughs> I have to ask you about the football drafts because that's, that's what right, they do you're, all the time. Be in it. I'm going to watch that. Well, he's gotten sliders, he's gotten fastballs, and Bob Melvin wondering what Stephen Bolton's pinch hit is going to get three and two. We saw a 3 2 slider Kayaspo. And Stephen Bolt with Kayaspo being held at first. They figured they're not going to pull it past him. And a fastball, it's ripped toward right center field, and that's going to be up the alley. It goes to the wall. Kayaspo is going to cover on to third, and he is going to score. And Vote comes through with a two out pinch hit RBI double. And Kai, that's what happens when you fall in love with a slider and you eventually have to throw a fastball. You could see Stephen Volt load up a little bit earlier. Maybe he guessed, maybe he figured he's going to get a fastball as a pinch hitter. He got it. And look at the location. He's able to pull a pitch that essentially was the outside part of the plate. And because of the count and because of the number of sliders that were not thrown in the strike zone, and with Kayasco running, the ball getting past Ellsbury, all things worked well for the athletics. That last hop prevented Ellsbury from getting to the ball. And Kayasco was able to score. So you might as well get another hit now and score him. Give Casimir a chance to win it. See if Sogard can do that. The first pitch is in for a strike. So Stephen Volt, a huge hit off the bench. And Stephen Volt, we have seen just like the walk off in game two of the division series last year, hit the ball to left field. He is wanting to use the whole field. If he's able to load up as he did, but fastball, he could pull it away from the defense. So quick 0 2 for Sogard. That's Adam Warren starting to throw. In the dirt and scrambling after it is John Ryan Murphy. Stephen Bolt at second base. Nice block by Murphy with the hard slider from this right hander. A nice check swing. But for Stephen Volt, the only reason that he would try to get to third, Ellsbury, and really the rest of the outfield playing very shallow. And if he gets to third, easier to score on a base hit to the outfield. But with nobody holding him close, he can get a huge lead off second and an even bigger jump if contact is made. Two pitch is bounced fair to share has it behind the bag. He flips to first in time. So guards retired. Stephen vote a huge pinch hit double that knocked home Kiaspo. So bottom of the eighth coming up and now we're tied at two.
Game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealer, Scott Casimir, no decision, six and a third good innings. Hiroki Kuroda, a no decision, six and two thirds good innings. Teixeira has got a couple of RBIs, including a solo home run, and Moss with a solo home run. And Stephen Vogt, the pinch hitter, with the two out RBI double that tied this game up in the top of the eighth inning. Two, three, and oh for the A's, two, six, and oh for the Yankees. So bottom of the eighth, Abad stays out there. So Stephen Vogt, you did your job. Now you can sit back and relax. New right fielder for the A's is Kyle Blanks. So Blanks takes over for Gentry. And it's Ellsbury, Teixeira, Solarte here in the bottom of the eighth. Teixeira and Solarte both switch hitters, and the first pitch is high to Ellsbury. Ellsbury single in the first. Now 2 and 0. Oh. Abad got the final two outs in the seventh inning, and he did that with a couple of runners on. Trying to see if Ellsbury takes a strike or tries a swing at a fastball, which not close. Sometimes, Ray, when a reliever comes in and he gets two big outs in an inning, and the adrenaline is there, and you see it occasionally. Sits down, goes back out there, and he's not the same. Absolutely. I agree 100%. We've seen some excellent closers do that when they try to get the outs in the eighth inning and go back out to the ninth inning. Now, certainly, you can understand why you'd want a bond to face Ellsbury. But in this case, it doesn't work out because Ellsbury walks, and now Bob Melvin's going to immediately go to. The right hander to face to Shara. That means to Shara turns right to bat left hand and, and that pretty quick move to first base, which may be because Ellsbury can steal. So when it's time for change, take speedy oil change and tune up your oil change. Tune up at Smog Experts. Oh, It's brought to you by Hyundai, and it's tonight at 10:30, and it's over on our sister station, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. All the highlights and clubhouse reaction from our game here at Yankee Stadium, and all the highlights from around the American Midwest, and a report from the 49ers OTAs. Henry Wilford and David Feldman will host. So to share it, to face Gregerson, that's. The main story and Ellsbury at first is the other story, Ray, because he is a terrific base dealer. Well, I apologize. I said Cook, but Gregerson did get up and start to throw with Cook. So Gregerson comes in and he's been pitching well, but right now a challenge because it does turn to show around. And I guess with the shift and a whole bunch of guys on the right side, get him to roll over on one of the 
signature sliders thrown by Gregerson. And Teixeira not fleet of foot. Ellsbury is. And so who is it going to be Donaldson covering second if there's an attempted steal? First pitch to Teixeira is a strike on the outside corner. This is Teixeira in the sixth inning batting right hand. That has just opened up top hand, crushed it. As we're trying to play it off the, the wall, but it never hit the wall. Ellsbury not running. Ellsbury is 15 for 17 in steal attempts this year. So a challenge for the A's here in the bottom of the eighth. Solarte is in the on deck circle. Good swing there by Teixeira. Fouls it straight back to the screen. And a good quick pitch by Gregerson. Got rid of it quickly. Ellsbury had a real big lead. Now he inches off a little bit further. Well, he's trying to get the time on Gregerson. Gregerson's alternating his uh, his deliveries, a slide step, quick pitching, taking his time, and all those things can disrupt the concentration and the lead by runner at first base. Not going, and it's outside. Ellsbury had 52 steals last year with the Red Sox and he was thrown out four times. Has not gone yet. Two and two the count. Well, they're staying away with a two seam fastball from Teixeira and ideally trying to figure he's going to try to pull the ball and get him to roll over on a ground ball. A two seamer away for a ground ball. That would foul back. So the infielders are bunched up, and you can see it right there. Shara is able to hold up. So a full count. Uh, he definitely didn't swing. It's a two seamer. He's top for sure. But Donaldson talking to Lowry. And you'd have to figure Ellsbury's going to be running. And it's going to be Donaldson covered. He is the third baseman playing in a shift position at the shortstop position. Outfield pretty straight away for Teixeira. Three and two. Runner wow. not going, wow. and it's strike three call. Wow. You know what Cap I think's happened? Because Gregerson is quick pitching, changing his cadence a little bit. Ellsbury can't get a lead. Because you figure if any time he's ever going to run, this would be it. See the ball take off? But how quickly. Gregerson got rid of it and to share it took it cannot believe that he took the pitch and it was right there. Oh wow is that a pitch to hit. And Ellsbury started stopped. And then got back and I just don't think he's gotten a read so far with Gregerson and you know, Bob Melvin knows his personnel and had to have a pretty good idea that Gregerson's move or his delivery was one that would keep Ellsbury close. First pitch to Salartes in first strike. So if you're the Yankee hitters, you're probably saying, oh, I'm, I'm trying to give you a chance to get into scoring position because you're the go ahead run. He has not gone yet. And he runs this time. Pitches low, throw to second base is wide, and Ellsbury has his 16th steal. Pitch was a ball, so the count is one and one. There's Ellsbury and a game against the Twins in this homestand. He's looking back, and boy, you'd have to think he's looking back. It's not a hit and run, straight still. Gaso had a 
bad transfer of course with the ball in the dirt no chance even that so it was grab it throw it and hope but it wasn't there pretty good pitch to run on by Ellsbury. Zalarte hits it hard but foul past Mitt Kelleher first base coach so now it's one and two with Soriano. It's not Soriano. I take that back. It's Ichiro Suzuki in the on deck, sir. See how long Gregerson looked back at second as he came to the set position. It's Ichiro being set for his first event, but Gregerson with Ellsbury, and of course, always a threat to steal even third base. But as he came to set position, even when he raised his leg, he was looking back at him as if to freeze him, or with the inside spin move, if he'd take it off, try to pick him off. Slider reached for and Roll foul. Zalarte is lined out, walked, and he has singled. There's the go ahead run. It's Ellsbury at second base. To pitch, he was reached for, fouled straight back. Astros still leading the Angels five to nothing. In that game in the bottom of the seventh inning. I remember last year the Angels had a tough time with the Astros, both home and away. You know, in that game, Ray Hamilton is back. Josh oh. Hamilton batting cleanup. That's the good news. But Mike Trout started that game and he left in the second inning. So they did not say if it was indeed the back, but. So Trout gone in the second inning due to an injury. Another look at second. If you're right, Ray Ellsbury, he'll take off and try to steal third. Yeah. So that's why Gregors is doing a good job paying attention and give him a second look occasionally or span or step off. Larte bounces one. Kiaspo has it. Underhand to Gregerson, who's at the bag, and that's out number two. That nice play by Kiaspo. And remember, he's not playing first base a lot. But the one thing pitchers work on during spring training, and with the A's a lot, and this is it. With runner at second with speed, Kiaspo, the feed to Gregerson. Watch Gregerson, what happens? Turns around, he looks immediately as the runner rounding third, because you don't pay attention, you keep running down. And a good runner with good speed will continue to run, and you never want to allow him to score from second base on the ground ball to first base. So, Gregerson played it perfectly and uh, trying to get the big out with Ichiro. First at bat for Ichiro, he came in the game for defense for Soriano. Ichiro, 3 11 with seven RBIs, and the first pitch is a strike right at the knees on the outside corner. And always the concern about each row. outfield shading him towards left field outfield playing very shallow blanks and right field playing normal distance positioning but center and left really shallow in case he bloops the ball they have a chance to try to pick it off. That's high each row this year has 28 hits. He's got 24 singles and four doubles. Okay ball so they don't have to pitch to him. Got a couple of paces on and it's very size more the right handed hitter in the on deck circle so it's not as if it's imperative that you go right after to left field Cespedes back he's under it he's got it side retired so nice job by Gregerson after the leadoff walk and we are headed to the ninth inning and we're all tied at two.
Scott Kazmir did a tremendous job. There's one guy's happy he was gone. That was Soriano because he kept using the changeup fastball and just did a great job with those two pitches. Threw an occasional curveball. They got Brendan Rod a couple of times. Actually, got him three times with fastball. But a very, very good job by Scott Kazmir. Season high, 10 strikeouts. He had nine against the Astros. And the player of the game, the hardest player of the game, rightfully so, with an outstanding performance you know, and no decision. And he'll take it, considering his club has come up with only three hits, one a home run, but a big pinch hit. RBI double by Stephen Volt to tie the game. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. It's the Yankees closer, David Robertson. He's got 12 saves, ERA four and a half, but another guy, look at the strikeouts 32 strikeouts in 18 innings. So you should not be surprised that the Yankees relievers lead the American League in total strikeouts. Cap, if he falls in love with the slider and a curveball or anything besides a fastball, matter. that's right. It's not as dead. That's. Uh, that can get you in trouble. It did for the young hard throwing right hander with a blown save. So top of the order for the A's, Crisp, Jaso, and Donaldson. Coco is 0 for 2 with a walk. The first pitch is a fastball on the outside corner for a strike. The A's runs. Moss a home run in the fifth, the solo shot, and vote an RBI double in the eighth. The Yankees are running the first on a Teixeira RBI single and to share a solo home run in the sixth. Well, Robertson obviously has some big shoes to fill. Mario Rivera is just so, I mean, just tonight alone, now pitching for the Yankees, not Mario Rivera, but David Robertson. Yep. Set up man for the great one, Mariano Rivera. That one's hit hard. Knocked down by Salarte, who picks it up, throws in time. It's kind of a half dive on the backhand, and it popped out of his glove. Boy, unfortunate Anna ball. Again, a ball hit very hard by Coco Chris, but right at Salarte. And actually, the ball he caught earlier in the line drive that was hit by Donaldson that was up the middle. He kind of awkwardly went after it, but able to knock this one down with Coco running, kept it close enough. Robertson does not have, although he does throw the cut fastball. But nobody throw or threw the cut fastball better than Marion Rivera. Matter of fact, that's all he ever threw. Robertson has a good fastball four seam, 94 95. A one pitch to Jaso, and it's low one and one. Robertson, interesting, right? He's there's Doolittle and Otero starting to throw. Robertson's 29 years old and he's going to be free agent. Mm -hmm. Been around a while and he's not signed a long term deal with the Yankees. So it's not just Jeter. But Soriano's going to be a free agent. Corona, who we saw tonight, 39 years old, he's a free agent. Never Ichiro been. and Robertson. I mean, yeah, you're right. And remember, Phil Hughes went for the Twins, Phil. signed a huge contract with Minnesota's pitch well for them. Matter of fact, beat his former team, the Yankees. And it's not, you know, part of it is do you pay him, do you not pay him? And if you don't, you have to have somebody to replace him. Right. And I'm talking about Robertson. I mean, he's a good quality reliever. Two and two. Jason rolls a foul. Jason has lined out, hit a fly ball to center, and grounded out. 0 for 3. Six times in the top of the eighth inning, and the Orioles now lead the Rangers eight to two in the ninth inning. Wow. So that, that happened. That was a two-two <laughs> game. 
You know, Nelson Cruz hit another home run for the Orioles. He's now got 21 home runs, and he did it against his former team. Did he walk around the bases saying, "Why didn't you resign me?" Well, Cruz got hit in the hand remember, yeah. over the weekend, and he was out of the lineup for a day or two. But back in there tonight, and he homered. And there was talk about the Rangers trying to resign him. Yes, and there they was. not have had to give up a, a draft choice because, like Stephen Drew of the Red Sox, they resigned and did not have to give up the choice. 3 2 pitch. Bounce back to Robertson. He reaches down and grabs it. And that's out number two. Well, Evaldo Jimenez started that game tonight for the Orioles. So, as we like to do, Ray, if he pitched tonight, which is Tuesday, lines him up to pitch Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday yep. against the A's in Baltimore. It's been an up and down year for Evaldo Jimenez. A late sign by the yeah by the Orioles. A lot of money. But we always enjoy Baltimore. Yeah. Camden Yards, one of the super nice ballparks. One and zero to Donaldson. And Donaldson, a big bouncer, leaping up his size more, spins around, throws, and Tashera dug it out. Heck of a play on both ends, and Donaldson is retired. So David Robertson has a three up, three down, top of the ninth, and we're headed to the bottom of the ninth. Sizemore's going to lead off, and we got a 2 2 game. These game groups of 20 guests are able to watch batting practice from center field on the field for select games. In addition, each member of your group will receive an A's logo glove to commemorate the experience. After BP, your group will enjoy a catered suite to watch the game. For more information, call 510-638-GO-A's or visit athletics.com slash center field. So bottom of the ninth from Yankee Stadium, the crowd tonight. 41,677 and I'd say about half of them have stuck around when it's time for change think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. So Dan Otero comes in and man has he been a workhorse his 26th appearance and this is game number 58 for the A's. We're trying to come up with a nickname for Dan Otero. I'm always ready to go, Otero. Oh, oh, I don't know. know. You've been thinking about that. I know, you? I know, because if you came up that takes the ball. If you came up for that was so quickly, you've been <laughs> thinking, <laughs> staying up a long time. Well, it's tough ready? to match. Never yeah. say no, Breslow. Yeah, that was one that's, of our that's a classic. This is Brian Roberts, and he taps one. 
Lowry charges. He's got it. Flips to first. And Roberts is retired. So Roberts hitting for Sizemore. Now you see the number 14. He was a single digit number one with the Orioles for his career. He was not getting that here. Nope. So Roberts is retired and maybe getting another pinch hitter. They got Brian McCann sitting down there. And Oh, Murphy, the catcher, is scheduled to hit, so I think that's who it's going to be. If the thing about Dan Otero and whatever nickname we want to give him, if he's on, which he was with Roberts, he's a ground ball pitcher. And that is his best attribute with his club. Keep the ball on the ground, keep it in the park, and he's only given up two home runs in his career. And he has been a great find for the athletics. Actually, he was for a short amount of time. I remember the Yankees. That's right. Remember he flew across the country yeah. from Arizona, the Giants. The Yankees claimed him and then let him go. And the A's were fortunate to claim right. him. 15 saves at AAA and with the big leagues and doing a fantastic job. So, yeah, he was a Yankee for a brief moment. Here he faces McCann. Lots of power. Be careful here. McCann, five year, $85 million contract to leave the Braves and sign with the Yankees. One 0 pitch, good one on the outside corner, and it's one and one. Remember, we were in Atlanta in his debut catching John Smokes. Right. That was a long time ago. 05, I was looking up, I couldn't remember, yeah. and I saw he Sounds about right. came up in 05 and uh, his first game west with John Smokes. Smokes is pitching, and now. He is in our business. Yeah. John Smoltz. He's good too. Future Hall of Fame. Absolutely. McCann hitting just 230. So off to a slow start his first year in New York. That's where he wants to stay. And I mean, McCann's up there trying to hit a home run and has a left handed stance, open stance, which lefties do in Yankee Stadium with a short porch. So you feature the sinkers away. There is that right foot open. He's thinking pull. I'm surprised that left foot's not closer to the plate. And that one's ripped towards center. Coco coming in, and he's going to short hop it. So Coco playing deep. He came in, and he had a decision to make. Do you dive for it? And if you miss it, it goes past you. He played it on the short hop, so it's a one-out sinker. Oh, up a little bit trying to pull it looked like with him trying to pull it, it's going to be perfect with Coco. Slight break back and lateral movement and then at that point forced to take it on the short hop. So McCann aboard here's Brendan Ryan. The only other. Hitter that the Yankees have on their bench is Kelly Johnson a left handed hitter. First pitch to Ryan is outside. Ryan has had a tough night at the plate. 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Well, McCann does not run very well, and you can't pinch run for him because he's your catcher. Yep. Gardner is in the on deck circle. And that one taps slowly. Donaldson charges. He's got it. He's going to throw the second, and they got him. Wow. What a gutsy play and a great play. It's almost as if he came down the line as he charged. He said, Oops, catcher running. I'm going to go the short distance. I'm going to go back to first there to second base. And it's nice that Sogard was alert as well because Sogi goes to the bag and Donaldson back across his body. and Nice stretch by Eric Sogard at second base because that's a great play because it worked. And smart play on Josh Donaldson's part because if he goes to first, that puts the go ahead run at second base. So, and Ryan, a little bit better speed at first. And when he attempt to steal, try to get in a scoring position, possibly, but Otero, like Gregerson, is very quick to the plate. So Gardner steps in. He's one for four. 
Single ground out, two strikeouts for Gardner. Ryan with a good lead at first. There's a strike. The strike zone by Chris Guccione works perfectly for Dan Otero. Oh. Sinker ball pitcher tries to keep the ball down, and Guccione stays with his normal strike zone, at least for tonight. Those are strikes. Gardner with three home runs on the air. It's been Kazmir, Abad, Gregerson, Otero. He's getting ready. He'll lead off in the tenth inning. Jeter would be next. Well, the main thing you do not want to do what the Yankees did with Stephen Bowe. You don't want to go to three and two, allowing the runner first to take off, as Kiasco did, and the ball in the gap. He was able to score. And there's a line drive, and Lowry, what a play! Terrific play by Lowry the shortstop timed his lead perfectly and that's how the bottom of the ninth comes to an end. So the Yankees do not score extra frames from Yankee Stadium. About timing and jump perfectly. Ball not hit that hard. Lowry goes up. Watch him kick the legs up a little bit extra hang time and just a snow cone brought it back down. And that's a great play because you don't want Derek Jeter to come up with the go-ahead run at second base. Now, I think that'd be best. I'd rather have him lead off in the bottom of the tenth. And after the A's score a couple of runs because Robertson's out. And they brought in another reliever. Typical situation where a closer. Or the home team comes in to try to get his team back in the dugout for the final of bat. And that was Robertson. Now Warren comes in to try to do the same. So the A's Robertson one inning. And now it's Adam Warren making his 26th game. Impressive earn run average. He also with a lot of strikeouts. So the Yankees bullpen West with a lot of hard throwers to get strikeouts. First pitch to Moss. Big swing fouls it back. Well, the Yankees like the Robertson Warren Natanzas threesome at the back end of their bullpen. Slate moves to third. Roberts comes in at second. Sizemore's out. Inside. And of course, McCann, as we said, stays in the game and he's the catcher. One and one to Moss. Taps that one foul. Pretty good. 
sinker there by Warren. Oh, well, this is the only blemish for Corona. Fastball three and two, and Brandon Moss. Actually, not a bad pitch down and away, but Moss looking for the fastball got it and hit number 14. You know, 47 runs batted in. One two pitch again roll fouls. Warren going down and into Moss, which is fine, but you better be careful down there. Cespedes to follow and then Lowry here in the top of the 10th inning. Fastball is high. Extra inning numbers. The A's are five and three. The Yankees are four and one. Setting up outside and it runs outside. So now full count. Well, different catcher and of course different pitcher. But when he go the slider, that's the one of the questions. Can the veteran and of course typically if a veteran catcher calls a pitch, Warren in this case the pitcher is going to go with his veteran catcher. Good slider and good fastball from this right-hander. Fastball away. Slider. And that was ripped to right. And deck for Moss, and the A's lead three to two. Oh. Wow, that was loud, and that was long, and it got into the second deck. Second time this year, got the White Sox back on the 13th of May. A two home run game and Brandon Moss, you know, with Brian McCann set up outside, I thought it was going to be a fastball too soon. There's a backdoor cut fastball or slider, and Brandon Moss just dropped the head of the bat so quickly, and that quickly it was a home run. So Moss now with 15 home runs and 48 RBIs. And I hope nobody tried to get in front of that ball because that was a rocket. Rattled around up there. That was like a Brayu's ball in Oakland. The White Sox. So one and one the count to Cespedes. So the A's with just four hits on the night. Well, we said about Mark Teixeira who came back after a wrist injury. Brandon Moss tonight is back. Those two players have accounted for three home runs. Yep. And for Teixeira, he's driven in both runs. For the Yankees with a bloop single to home run. Remember when the uh, the Mariners were in town? It was an extra inning game a Thursday night, and it got to the point that Hector Moisey came in, gave up the, the walk off home run. And once you get past the closer, then you have to go to the rest of the bullpen. And I think you said it best as far as the three guys, Robertson. Tanzas, of course, even Warren's in that yeah. picture, but he comes in after. Sure. And as it turns out, Doolittle's getting loose, trying to save what right now is a one-run game. And since Doolittle's a closer and a visiting team, he can wait until the A's, in this case, have taken the lead. Two and two. Cespedes is one for three. First pitch, and now three and two. We also talked about how important it was in that seventh inning when yeah. the Yankees had two on and nobody out. They were trying to extend their lead, and we said Bob Melvin is managing this inning like it's the ninth inning. It's perfect, yeah. And the Yankees did not score. Kept it a one-run game. Vote ties it, and now the A's have the lead. Now the three-two. Watch where Brian McCann sets up. You think this is going to be a two-seam fastball, but watch what happens. That is a hanger. And all you're doing is speeding up the bat of a powerful left handed hitter, and Brandon Moss just start to trot immediately as he crushed it. I mean, this is just a matter of how far it's going to go. They said 420. That was a rocket. I'm glad that guy in the blue shirt just jumped and missed it because that was over his head in a heartbeat. Bob Melvin with a big smile. 
And now Cespedes is aboard, and here's Lowry. But when you speed up the bat, Brandon Moss worked to count the first home run 3 2 fastball. This time he gets a slider 3 and 2. In fact, you look how many hitters tonight that they tried to throw sliders to get them swing of bad pitches, and the A's have not done it. Worked the count in the favor of the Athletics. In a case of Stephen Bolt, probably the biggest hit to tie the game with a fastball that he hit the right center. So we'll get a, a visit from Larry Rothschild, the pitching coach. This was the hit that tied it. Remember, there was nobody on and two outs. And then Kiasco got a walk, and then Volt pinch hitting for Gentry did this. But even that, you could see Volt kind of load up a little bit earlier and pull a pitch that he normally hits to the opposite field. And that was the difference, knowing that going to look fastball, load up, try to pull it, and he did it in the right center, the best place to, to hit it to score Kiasco. Little's been out there a while, so he's ready to go. Lowry rifles one left center field, and nobody's going to get it. Cespedes will head to third. He'll be waved home. He's going to score easily. Lowry with an RBI double, four to two A's. Another hitter's count, another fastball, and another double by Jet Lowry, 16th. So uh, Cespedes walked nice and bad on a 3 2 slider. He took it. And Jed Lowry with a fastball down and away. He goes so well in the opposite field, and that would split the gap. Nobody's going to get to it. And of course, with Cespedes at first able to read the ball in front of him, able to score easily. So RBI number 23 for Lowry. I would say the A's have a flair for the dramatic. Nine last at bat wins. And that means this must have to be a walk off. This will, if the A's win this one, it'll be a last at bat win. In this game, they they were trailing two to one after six innings. They were trailing two to one after seven innings. And you're right about Kiasco after two outs. Two of the three batters before him had struck out with Tonsis, and he throws him a 3 2 slider trying to get him to chase. He doesn't. Another 3 2 count the vote and ties the game. And that was big. That's the eighth inning with a lead. Yep. One and two now to Kayaspo. Kyle Blanks is the on deck hitter. He's the right fielder now. Castro okay, hanging out over the plate. Trying to pull the ball to the right side and trying to get another run. All right, second, nobody out. And that's when. Try to top hand a ball and pull it to advance the runner. Fundamental baseball. Lowry with his lead at second. And that one's hit in the air to left field, playable for Gardner. So Kiaspo cannot get Lowry over. One out here in the top of the tenth, and that'll bring a blanks for his first at bat. Gentry started in right, vote hit for Gentry in the eighth, and then blanks came in the game in right field. So Norris and Punto, the two A's bench players that have not been used tonight. He's hit a change up and he's hit a fastball for his two home runs and two runs batted in. Pitch 
Must have been a little bit outside. So the A's get a run off Patances, who's been very good this year, and they get two runs so far off Adam Warren, a guy who's got an ERA of 1.71. It's about a uh, six to one strikeout to walk ratio. Well, I mean, it just it, it doesn't matter who's pitching late in the game. That one's going to drop into center field for a hit. They're going to wave home Lowry. The throw to the plate is cut off. Another RBI hit, and it's five to two as Blanks comes through. Did you see that throw? It was not a good throw. Wow. I mean, Ellsbury with great speed. That's going to be it for Warren, but another slider, and this bloop, and Lowry looked at it, got a pretty good read, is going to drop in front of Ellsbury. He charged it. Had plenty of time and threw the ball into the dirt at the mound. Not even close. And Jed Lowry sent by Mike Gallego, and that's that's Mike Gallego there because Lowry did not get a particularly great jump, but enough for Gallego to send it. So we got a new pitcher. A's have scored three times here in the tenth. This three game series Drew Pomeranz against Masahiro Tanaka and our coverage begins at 930 a.m. with A's pregame live and then of course you get complete A's coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSNCalifornia.com. So that's Thursday morning 930 A's pregame live 10 05 the ball game. From Yankee Stadium. Sogard skies went toward Ellsbury who's under it. He's got it. So that's the second out of the inning. The new pitcher is Preston Claiborne. Preston Claiborne, who is making his 15th appearance. 2 0, 3.71 ERA. So Claiborne trying to clean up the mess made by Adam Warren. Coco Crisp is. 0 for 3 with a walk. So our very fine stat man Anthony here at Yankee Stadium just gave us an interesting note, Ray. It has to do with the Yankees bullpen in their last three games. Yeah. Versus the Twins on Sunday, they allowed six runs in the ninth inning. Versus the Mariners yesterday, four runs in the ninth. And of course, tonight, A's have scored three runs in the tenth. Anthony, that's great stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Anthony's a hard worker. Yeah. He works hard. Well, most everybody in this booth is. Did most, you say most? Most everybody. Mike's good. Mike's really good. Anthony's terrific. And? Just those two. <laughs> 
<laughs> one and one to Coco. So a homer, walk, double, fly out, single, fly out, and the A's have scored three times. Funny, Bob Melvin has said before, and it's really true, he said, the A's have their best at bats late in the game. It's true. And it really is true, for whatever reason that is. Not to say he didn't appreciate the grand slam of the five runs the no, first inning with Richards, but but at that point he knew that five runs the first inning he needed his club to add on, and Donaldson added four and himself the rest of the game, which uh, that's something that you know it, it's not you want to get greedy. Sure, you want runs early, but you also don't want your offense to stop. So what you're saying is perfect that if they don't score early, they're not giving up late. No, nope. and even Nathan. Joe Nathan on Thursday at the Coliseum against Detroit. He had a five to two lead. They had first and second, ninth inning. Trading by run and the time run a second. It didn't come through, but that's, they made it a game. Yep. They always do. There goes the shift. You know, you would think that with, with a, a hitter with two strikes, that you would think he's going to shorten up and go opposite field. But yet in the Coco, a case of Coco, again, according maybe to where they're going to pitch him, Solardi goes over, now three on the right side. And Coco last time hit a ground ball to the second baseman. And it's that one through the shift, base hit. And Blanks. And the ball gets past the center fielder, Ellsbury. Now Blanks to third, and the ball goes near the dugout, almost into the dugout, but luckily for the Yankees, it did not. Now Blanks rounded second and he looked back towards center. That's how he saw the ball was juggled by Ellsbury. But there was nobody, nobody at third. And two guys started a race towards third. And then maybe Ellsbury looked up. But there's your shift. That's a ground ball double play in normal positioning. There you see Blanks. And then once Ellsbury overran the ball. And, you know, he got lucky because the stadiums now with the very little foul territory, that ball hit Blanks and then headed towards the dugout, but because of the rails, ball stays out of the dugout. That's a run unless you find one of the openings going down the stairs. That saves an extra run and an error, in this case on Ellsbury. He does get They're one error. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say because Coco going to second. So a single and then an error. So second and third, two outs for Jaso, the eighth man to bat in the inning. And really, after the home run by Moss, that I'm sure shook up a lot of people, but then you throw a 3 2 slider to Cespedes is to walk him to keep the inning going. Talked about the importance of keeping the Yankees just a one run lead, yet after the A's take the one run lead, it opens up for them to add two more on top of him. Jaso tonight is 0 for 4, so good time to get his first hit. Now 2 and 1. And David Robertson, the only Yankee reliever who was able to keep the A's off the board. He pitched the top of the ninth inning. Two one pitch is ripped foul. So now at the count even at two and two to Jason. Astros leading the Angels seven to two. That game has reached the ninth inning. So the A's with a chance to pick up a game. On the Angels, they currently have a four and a half game lead in the division. As we always say, Ray, a lot of baseball left, yep, and absolutely. you can pick up games quickly. But I'd rather be in first place than that, than second place. Well, better be the team they're chasing yeah, and see right. that's right. Because you have to put on, uh, put together a long winning streak and sustain that streak. 
be able to try to catch the team that's leading. Langston walked to home with the lead. He gets off third base. And the pitch is outside and the bases are loaded for Donaldson. A good take by Jason on a 3 2 2 scene fastball. So Blanks at third, Crisp at second, Jaso at first for Donaldson with three runs in. Close pitch. Had to have run off the plate for height wise. It's been a strike by Guccione. Fans are getting a little angry here at yeah. Yankee Stadium, as you can imagine. It's about 11:45 local time. Donaldson, big rip. Skies from the shallow center where Ellsbury comes in. He's got it. Side retired. So the A's score three times in the top of the tenth. The first run coming, and Brandon Moss's 15th home run of the year, and it was impressive. Check it out. 5-2 A's as we head to the bottom of the tenth. Ten thirty on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. A's highlights, all the rest of the AL Western Division highlights, and a report from Forty Nine ers camp. Henry Wolford and Dave Feldman will host Sportsnet Central. So the A's scored three times in the top of the tenth inning to take a five to two lead. So it's a save opportunity for Sean Doolittle. Doolittle has five saves on the year and. Trying to make it six and get this nine game road trip started out on the right foot. Mays will get good news from Houston, where the Astros just beat the Angels by a final score of seven to two. So he's have a chance to pick up a game. Hamilton homered in that game, but not nearly enough for the Angels. The Angels have now lost four in a row. So Jeter to lead it off. It'll be the heart of the order. Jeter, Ellsbury, Teixeira against Sean Doolittle. Doolittle is the fifth pitcher of the night for the A's. And again, the bullpen has been terrific. First pitch to Jeter is a fastball right there for strike. Jeter, strikeout, line out, ground out, fly out. So seven hits. For the Yankees, but none for Jeter. 
gets jammed. So guys there he grabs it and that's out number one. So Jeter 0 for 5 is go ahead back to the dugout and that'll bring up Ellsbury. John Doolin has been so good with his fastball that even though you're a hitter and you look for it, you have to load up very, very quickly to try to get to it. And because he throws it up in the zone, which is hard to catch up to, and also occasionally down in the zone, which it's kind of up and down, not so much sideways, but velocity is there. Outside to Jacoby Ellsbury, a single, a line out, a ground out, and a walk for Ellsbury. He walked leading off the bottom of the eighth inning. That was right after the A's had tied it. But the Yankees could not get him home. He ended up being stranded at third base. No runs allowed in the last 13 games for Sean Doolittle. Fastball 95 miles an hour and it's a swinging strike one and two. Fastball high. So Doolittle can save this. Otero would get the win. Right by him at 94, and that's a strikeout, two outs. Swear back and throw it, and why not? And that's. Lefty on lefty, and he's looking for it. Ace pitchers tonight with 13 strikeouts, 10 coming from Casimir, the starter. Two homer night for that guy, Brandon Moss. And of course, he's post game live coming up after the game. Guys are waiting in the studio and see if we can't talk to Brandon Moss back here at Yankee Stadium. I think that calf is feeling okay. Well, if you hit home runs, you don't have to run. That's right. <laughs> That's for sure. It's the best remedy. A group of ace fans out there. They're having a good time. Remember the game. Started late. It was a one hour and 12 minute rain delay to start the game. And then extra innings. So a long night at the ballpark, but it's close to ending well for the Athletics. One and two to Teixeira. And that was hit very high. But well foul. See that lone A's fan standing and cheer like they would do at home trying to get the foul out. And he's looking around, say, all these Yankee fans, I don't think they're going to join me. No, girlfriend's probably saying, we fool, what are you doing? Yeah. Sit down. <laughs> But he's cheering for the A's. That's good. He's all by himself in that bright alternate drove jersey. So two and two to Teixeira, who's had a good night. Home run, RBI single. Do little kicks and the pitch and that one's grounded to Donaldson. He scoops it up and that's the ball game. Good win for the A's. They score three in the top of the 10th and they beat the Yankees in extra innings five to two. Give Otero his fifth win. Give a couple of home runs to Brandon Moss and he's going to be our guest on A's post game live. Final score in 10 innings from Yankee Stadium. The A's five and the Yankees two. You've been watching A's baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California. Don't go away. Ace Post Game Live with Brody, Biff, and Joe starts right now.